welcome back again to Dave's Dimension. Welcome back again for another live stream slash video. <laughs> welcome back again to the channel that is your home for tech toys and talk. And of course, the channel where, well, chaos and insanity will always reign, reign supreme, especially tonight as we talk and discuss all things Ghostbusters. We got the new movie coming out to theaters everywhere on, well, the 22nd, but some of us are going to be able to see it on that Thursday night, the 21st. But I've gathered a collection of Ghostbusters from around the community, around the universe. Some who've been Ghostbusters for years, some who've just recently came into the fold this past year, and some and one who's actually just starting. So I want to welcome you guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna unofficially call call this the Toy Busters stream. So we're gonna we're gonna introduce each one one at a time, but we're gonna talk about ghostbusters why we love ghostbusters and what we're hoping to see in frozen empire especially since there's been a lot of trailers a lot of clips hitting the airwaves whether you watch live tv hulu youtube it's been everywhere it's been smacking you in the face kind of like a redheaded stepchild so me personally i've been excluding myself from a lot of social media i only go on to check messages i've been trying to not get spoiled too much but hey, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, spoilers are middle name, let's be honest. So let's bring it up right here. This is our pregame discussion for Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Of course, Dave's dimension here. We have Nick Vital of the Daytona Beach Ghostbusters, the pride of the Daytona Beach Ghostbusters. He was complaining about it being too hot down there, guys. Can you believe it? Of course, we got Hey Archer of Nerd Affiliated, EC Collecting, uh, rambling nerd was going to join us tonight but he's uh just getting off of work so he had to bow out this time around we'll catch him on the next one but guys let's start it off that's the man right there on the right side nick vital the man the myth the legend himself of the daytona ghostbusters this guy i've known him for a number of years i met him when i first started getting into ghostbusting before i even was a part of a franchise I was just a crazy nerd having a midlife crisis of building a Back to the Future proton pack. So let's introduce Nick to the stream. How are you He's doing tonight, on, Nicholas? I am doing phenomenal, David. Phenomenal. And yeah. Yes. He's using his full government name right there, Nicholas. I am. Nicholas. Yes. Nicholas it's J. A rare, it's, it's a rare thing, but I use it on occasion. And Nick, of course, he's also rocking. We're both rocking basically the, the engineer uniforms. You got to represent. Now, Nick, how long have you been with Daytona? I think it's going to be going on five years now. I started off with the North Florida Ghostbusters, and now I'm with Daytona. And it's been about, it, I think it's just about five years now. April, I think it's five years. Yeah, it's going to be five years for me for Buffalo with uh, like this August. So awesome. Nice. Now let's yeah. bring on our next guest, the president himself. You guys might know him as Hey Archer or Nerd Affiliated, the man, the myth. And what's with that CeeLo Brown kind of gaze you got going on there? I don't know what's going on. Uh, this man has so many hats, it's not even funny. Like I said, he's Hey Archer. He's Nerd Affiliated. He also, uh, him and his cohorts, Sal and also the Rambling Nerd, Anthony, they together are the real nerd busters. You can find them on Instagram. You can find their streams on Monday mornings at 9 a.m. Eastern on YouTube and nerd affiliated. And of course, Thursday night lives that, that he does every Thursday night at around 8 15 ish PM Eastern. Welcome. Hey, Archer. Yo, what is happening? Look at that intro slideshow and everything. Yeah, you know, you know, I, I, I came, I came complete with, you know, graphics and all. You did, and you even matched my, uh, the thumbnail style with the border and everything. Look at that. My first attempt at playing with PowerPoint. Yeah, I'm, I love I'm that. Getting a handle at that. <laughs> Pretty solid, not a lot. Yeah. yeah. Now, Nick. Now, if you don't know, Archer is he's not part of a franchise, but he has his own little trio of miscreants. Him, Sal, and uh, Ramblin' Nerd. Uh, Rambling Nerd is, is his guy, uh, his, well, I shouldn't say guy in the chair, but he's the boots on the ground. He's boots in on the NYC, ground. Because uh, if you're not following him on Instagram, 
please check them out, the Real Nerd Busters, and also they're affiliated on Instagram. They had some killer photos there at the firehouse, all all around the premiere. Just amazing photos. Dare I say, I think he scooped a lot of so-called big ones on uh, YouTube. So, kudos. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I, I will make one revision to the roster there. Um, so, next to, to Anthony in the picture there, that's actually my other friend, Steve, who uh, we went to college together. So, okay. Steve is also part of the Nerd Busters. And then um, we have the, the Dorkverse as well. Also part of the, the nerd busters, not in this picture. We 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 assembled with him in Comic Con later on in the day, so he's yeah. not in that picture. But uh, he's also on our Instagram. So, well, you guys can check out all the pictures from uh, from their adventures in New York City Comic Con this past year. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully, if I do go next year or this year, I will try and coordinate and figure out what what day you guys are going to be there and try to be there the same day. Yeah, for sure. Because we literally missed. He was there Friday. I was there with um, my wife and my uh, one of my teammates, Dan Lyberg, uh, both of them part of the Buffalo Ghostbusters. We came down uh, for New York City, and we even uh, hung out and helped out the uh, New York City boys down there. Yeah. Actually, Louis in the chat right now. Louis Dork, uh, Dorkverse, he's the uh, the fourth member. Let's just go through the chat very quickly. I want to say some hellos. Of course, we got Nerd, Nerd Affiliate. He's in both places at once. Talk about the <laughs> The soul, the minds. Welcome to the stream. EC collecting, which we'll see very shortly. Everyone's saying hello to everyone else. The multiversal moderator, Rolando Flores. I hope you're feeling better, my friend. I know he's been a little bit under the weather, but he's still going on those uh, those maniac toy hunts. Mm -hmm. We got Carlos Diaz, a, a young Ghostbuster who's uh, been joining the streams lately. Let's see, we're gonna skip ahead. Rolando dropping the links. Thank you, Rolando. Mega Demon. I hope you're doing good, Mega Demon. And we got, whoa. Oh, if you want a frozen pizza from up north, it's Blue Sasquatch. Papa Squatch in the house. Louis Dork first. Welcome. What I miss? You miss nothing. Miss and by the way, I love the thumbnail. Paul McGann, one of my favorite Doctor Who uh actors of all time so thank you very much he never got uh, that much of a a presence so appreciate that everyone's saying hello to everybody else so let's you know uh let's take a look here our next slide of course we were going to have rambling nerd i made a nice little thumbnail for him <laughs> uh you know work happens life happens we'll catch him on the next one but guys if you want to check out some amazing he's been doing uh him and archer both been doing mods to their packs He's been doing mods to his HasLab, though. Uh, so definitely check out Ramblin' Nerd. Um, that's under the Nerd Affiliated umbrella on uh, the Nerd Affiliated Network on YouTube. So please go ahead and check them out. And yes, you will never see his face. He is the Casey Jones burst buster right there. The man of mystery. But this man's not so much a mystery, but he's all about the NECA, especially the turtles. He's the collecting. Let's let me move the comments so we can actually see Colin's face. There you What's go. What's going on? What's up? Uh, Colin's the most re he he's basically the rookie right now. He he just he's just starting busting right now. He got his uniform. He's got his EC tag. You know, he he's going he's doing just like Archer going going with the the the, the screen name. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, eventually I, I'm going to do that on a separate suit. I'm going to do a, a dimension suit at some point in the future. Oh, there he is. Thursday evening, technically. Yeah. There, there's Ramblin' Nerd popping up in the chat. But these guys, these guys are Ghostbusters of different walks of life. I've been a fan since I was a kid. I just joined Buffalo Ghostbusters. I officially joined them uh again almost five years. It's gonna be five years this August. Uh Nick, however, has been a Ghostbuster for a lot longer. Like you said, you you were part of uh, you said North Florida, right? Yep. When was the first time you actually suited? What year? Um, probably. Well, I think it was twenty eleven. Okay. 
So he he he's been uh, professionally busting uh, a lot longer than some of us. Now, what was it about Ghostbusters that that drew you in? Well, let's see. I started off like most of us. I started off with Ghostbusters too. Um, my aunt had a place in the Poconos in Pennsylvania, okay. and she bought me the VHS in 1989. Okay. For Christmas that year. And I pretty much played that tape until it fell apart. <laughs> um, and then from there, it's just the real Ghostbusters cartoon, the toys. I had damn near every toy. My mom, my dad, my aunt, they all bought them for me. I still have my original firehouse. I, I lost you. a lot of my stuff, though, unfortunately, in 99 in Hurricane Floyd. Yeah, But it still has been something that's been a love of mine since three, four years old. But you still got the memories, though. Oh, absolutely. Now, Archer, when uh, when did you start your obsession with Ghostbusters? Yeah. Uh, I'm no longer embarrassed. I will say it out loud. I'm a newer fan. I actually saw it for the first time in, I'm going to say, 2020. It was the first time I saw it. Uh, growing Ghostbusters, up in the, correct? The first one, yep. Okay. Because growing up in a super religious household, I wasn't allowed to watch it as a kid. Oh. And uh, so I saw it in 2020. I thought it was cool. I was like, all right, yeah. You know, yeah. as a New Yorker, I, I hit all the right notes <laughs> and all that. Um, and then it was actually because Anthony wanted to up his cosplay game for last year's Comic Con. And two years prior, I bought the 80% spirit pack off of uh, at spirit halloween on sale so i was like oh this is a great price it's like 35 dollars or 25 dollars because it was a return oh. so i was like oh I'll, I'll buy this on a you know maybe someday better. yeah someday i'll i'll use it so i was like oh i got this proton pack i will um use it for the cosplay and i'll, I'll be a ghostbuster with you and then uh in doing so every time i cosplay something i have to consume the content because i know people are always going to try to check you yeah so I rewatched the first one, rolled into the second one, rolled into um, Afterlife after that. That was my first time watching Afterlife and was like, I get it. I was like, now I get it. And then through all the various YouTube channels like yours, yes. Ghostbusters News, all the mod videos online, Scolari Brothers, um, everybody. I was like, it was like the passion was like coming out of the YouTube videos. And my brain was just like absorbing it. And I was like, now I get it. I'm all in. Sign me up. Now, since, since you are in, and there's no, no shame in being, you know, being a, a fan that or a fan that got into it most recently. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, in fact, uh, a friend of mine uh, told me that uh, they were at the premiere. And they had a couple that they somehow got premiere tickets that night. Mm hmm. First time they saw any Ghostbuster movie somehow. I believe and it. And they were just enamored with it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's there's nothing wrong with that. And in fact, I love seeing that because, you know, if you get someone who, you know, we're, most of us, with the exception of Colin, is probably around around our 40s, right? Mm -hmm. Colin, you're, you're in your 30s, right? Yep. 35. Okay. I mean, it's it's great because a lot of us we grew up with exposure to the cartoon or to the toys or you know some exposure like our aunts and uncles were into it. Me, however, right when I was a kid because I was born in seventy eight, so mm. in eighty four, you know, I was you know I was around that age. I was five five going on you know five or six, so you know it was it was already I was already kind of engrossed in, into it, but. I mean, like, let me ask you, did you cry during Afterlife? Did, did you uh, get a little emotional a little bit? No. It, no. So so I felt it, but it, that didn't happen only because okay. I knew what was going to happen. And it was twofold. One, I saw the toys in Target through toy hunting, you know, okay. back in 2020. And then I edited Anthony's review of Afterlife back when he reviewed it in 2020 okay. or 2021 whatever year that year that was so um i knew what was coming and 
but I thought it was done very well. I was like, this is straight up Dragon Ball Z ripoff, but in the best way. <laughs> like, it's just a subtle, <laughs> subtle, you know, family Kamehameha moment, but it worked. Oh, yeah. I yeah. was like, this actually, like, legit works. This is how you do an homage to something. So, um, okay. after I saw that movie, I was like, yeah. I was like, For I, me, I, I'm in. I walled up, but that's just because, one, I was a tremendous Harold Ravens fan. Mm hmm from like animal house to i mean just everything he 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 touched over the years him and bill in stripes still hits me because i used to watch that movie with my dad all the time same thing with ghostbusters we would watch it over, over and over again so i mean and you know being a harold ramus fan over the years like he was in sleepless in seattle he had a small part in there he had a small part in airheads he was just kind of a comedy presence but you really didn't see him too much on screen, but you always felt him in the writing and the directing. So for me, it's, you know, it, it, hit, it hits a certain way. And I still, I feel it every time I watch it, you know. Every time. So, <laughs> now, who's your favorite Ghostbuster? Uh... I mean, if, if you, let's say you were a brand new employee ghostbusters and you had you got to choose the mentor you got the shadow who would you choose i might i might go with ernie because while i'm not good at being a gearhead that interests me the most like i used to work on ships and boats back in the day okay and the team I would hang out with the most was the engineers, even though I was not an engineer. So I think that's who I would probably shadow the most. Um, well, it's interesting that. that you chose a fellow serviceman because in the comics, or, uh, you know, Winston Zeddemore served. Oh, they, they yeah, he was a yeah, he was a Marine. Oh, there you go. So, you know, again, I, I'd have to go with your choice. Because, one, I mean, Venkman is the fast talker, womanizer. He would probably blame a bunch of stuff on you, you know. You know, uh, so you, you'd get razzed, like, razzed all the time by him. Egon, Egon would just kind of over tech explain things. And you know Ray is going to just ramble on about crazy, weird stuff. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I definitely think uh, Winston is he he's he's the level headed guy. He's the everyman. He's the guy like I mean, come on, Ghostbusters too. Hey guys, we should get our packs. What about the packs? You know, I mean, and he's got some of the best one liners. You know, you know, if there's a steady paycheck in it, I'll believe anything you tell me. You know, we got the tools, we got the talent. You know, even Ghostbusters too. Did you catch the train? Was it such and such? No, sorry, I missed it. You know, he's got some of the best lines. And let, 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 let's be honest, like he said, he's the sex appeal. <laughs> he, he, he was just the cool, he was the cool guy. You know, he was just Joe Cool throughout, you know, the whole mythos of it. And especially in real Ghostbusters, we got to see different sides to him. I mean, he was really more enduring, hopeful, and just, I mean, he definitely proved his worth as a Ghostbuster. So he's definitely the person I would choose. Alan, now before we get into your story, who would you choose? I would go Winston, too. Okay. Yeah. And Nick? I'm I'm a Venkman guy. Okay. So 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 it's all about the scams and the hot chicks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We we we. I mean, I might we know have what it is. If that's what the, if that's what doing. Well, I mean, come on, Vakeman's opening uh opening scene in Ghostbusters, where he's like he's torturing. He's got two college students. He's torturing one, and he's rigging things so he can you know get the number of of of, of the female. You know, <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah, you know, that 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 sums sums them up pretty well. You know, so Colin, um. Uh, when did your obsession with Ghostbusters start? Um, well, I've always been a Ghostbuster fan, believe it or not. Um, 
it was a big movie. Like I think I actually think my mom was a big fan of Ghostbusters because it's I mean it's it's one of our main movies my whole childhood growing up. I I I don't remember the first time I saw it, but I know I was young. Um, I just I've always was a movie person, and then I always knew about like the Ghostbuster groups and everything, and you know people building the packs and all that. But like it was never in my like I was never around any of that stuff okay. until I met like you guys, you know. <laughs> so <Air> pressure. <laughs> so like yeah, I mean I was always a fan of just. I didn't and I didn't enter the world of like, you know, cosplaying and stuff until I met you guys. And it was just too hard to say no, you know. I mean <laughs> one of us. One of us. I mean me, I grew up with I mean, I didn't have the toys. I didn't I like I had one real Ghostbuster figure. My family we couldn't afford much. So I had like one real Ghostbuster figure. And of course, right away the the stream broke right off the wands. You know. It was what it was. Uh, I didn't have. You, 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 you spayed and neutered your, your wand. Okay. I did, yeah. <laughs> Basically, yeah. I mean, I didn't get like the, the Ecto or any of that stuff until late two or three years ago. Yeah. I still would here. like I would like to get a firehouse. I have the Playmobil firehouse, which technically is my wife's. I bought it for her. <laughs> she assembled it. But she's like, well, well, you you have the collection room. It'll, you, you can just keep it in there. But well, now she's like got I, her, she's got her own mini puff collection now. It's, it's that's that's like I, I bought the uh, Playmobil set for my my son when he was like three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I have the I have both Ectos for from Playmobil. I have a original Ecto one which was restored by one of my teammates, uh, restored color wise. Bought the decal sets, which you can still get on Etsy. A ghost, you can get a Ghostbusters one or a Ghostbusters two style. So I have one of those. I have an Ecto two. Um, I have like the reissue figures. I, I have the new, you know, the reissue fright features, which I'm still annoyed that they don't have Jane, but that's another story for another time. You know, go go all out. But uh, for me, it was I didn't have you know, like. I had an upside down. I turned my school backpack upside down, and I had some Legos with a wire connect tape to it. That was like my wand, you know. But like you said, you you were kind of aware of the communities loosely. It was what was it twenty eighteen? I think it was. I it was like the um, I think that was the twenty fifth anniversary or thirty fifth anniversary of Ghostbusters. No, it was twenty nineteen. I think it was. Yeah. Um. I wasn't a part of any groups, but I was like, you know what? There's a spirit proton pack, kind of affordable. I was like, well, that would be cool. But Christopher Lloyd is coming to Niagara Falls Comic Con, and I remember reading a fan fiction where supposedly Ray, when he worked in the private sector, worked with Doc Brown on a project at some point in time. So I'm like, well, what if those two got together and actually built some kind of a proton pack? What would it look like? And that's what I built. The thing was like, I never like I that's how I met Nick actually, Ghostbusters Fusion Group back then. Uh I came across uh like I said, well, maybe there's some groups for like cosplays and stuff. I came across Ghostbusters Fusion, which is now GB crossover, I think, as the yeah. title now. Yeah. Uh, but it was all about crossovers, whether people were doing a My Little Pony or a Beetlejuice proton pack, which people have done. Steampunks. Uh, there's even uh, TARDIS. You know, there's there's all different mm -hmm. kinds of fandoms that have crossed over. That's how I met Nick, and I slowly changed my concept several times. I built this crazy proton pack that I actually sold to fund the Haslab, believe it or not. And now that I'm getting a new 3D printer next month. Uh, we're looking at possibly doing a one-to-one -one scale reproduction, or I guess a Mark IV version of it. So I'm looking forward to that. But uh, later that summer, I came across uh, the Buffalo Ghostbusters at a local, uh, a local Think Geek, uh, like Funko Pop release for the 35th anniversary. One of them actually followed me. He says, "Hey, you're 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 Dave Sonso." I was like, "Yeah, how do yeah. you know?" He's like. 
oh, I'm so and so on Facebook, and you know, he gave me some tips on a few things, and you know, I talked to them. I was kind of like interested in joining them, and the rest is history, you know. And it's been a wild ride. I mean, you know, I'm not saying everyone should join a franchise, but with with franchises, you, you get some pretty crazy situations. You get to see smiles on people's faces, and like that. Me doing even before I met the Buffalo Ghostbusters, me doing my first con, my first cosplay ever with the Proton Pack, I had a kid come up to me, and that experience changed me forever. Um, this woman and her kid were like, hey, my son would like to take a picture with you. I'm just, I'm just looking around and like, me? And, you know, they, I, I got down, I'm, I knelt down, posed with the kid, and he, he looks up at me and says, I want to be just like you. I'm like, I'm like holding back tears. Like my friends are like looking at me like, I'm like, please tell me you got a photo of there. Like, they're like, no, what happened? I was like, he tells me he wants to be a ghostbuster. And then the mother asks, Oh, where are you set up? I'm like, I'm a guest just like you. But that vibe, that feeling like, you know, kids and old, you know, everyone loves ghostbusters. Have you ever found, have you ever met someone who, who says they hate ghostbusters? Never. Yeah. So, I mean, even during the pandemic, you know, uh, the franchise I'm part of, we were doing uh, parades, like birthday parades, to social distance and doing birthday stuff, like birthday videos. And, you know, that's the spirit of Ghostbusters. You get people who are kind of outcasts or people who are come from different walks of life. They come together and, you know, sometimes stuff happens and who are you going to call? And, I mean, Ghostbuster groups over the years, they... They go and they put smiles on people's faces, just like the Ghostbusters went into people's homes and chased ghosts and caught them. And, you know, they took on what takes what goes bump in the night. I mean, that I think is probably one of the best names of Ghostbusters is you don't have to be a rich person. You don't have to be a perfect person. You could be someone who's got, a, you know, a bit of a gut or you could be some some scrawny guy who can barely uh, lift the bowling ball, but anybody can be a Ghostbuster, and that's why I really loved about it. And also, you don't have to be Vinkman, you don't have to be Winston. That's why on all the name, name tags, you see the person's last name or you see the name that they chose, you know, because there's franchises, like Vinkman said in the first one the franchise rights alone will make us rich beyond our wildest dreams. And, that's just that's anyone can be a Ghostbuster, you know. Um, whether you like Ghostbusters one or Ghostbusters two or answer the call or you know whatever your taste is, anybody can be a Ghostbuster. Even if you like the film, uh, the uh, what was it the filmation Ghostbusters, which honestly I, I enjoyed that at the same time of real Ghostbusters. But that's what I love about it. So let's get in course the very first ghostbusters we're going to do a slight little recap nothing too long let's see if i can pull this back up now there we go 1984 three out of work scientists went into business for themselves busting ghosts and business was good so good they hired a fourth man they had the tools they had and they most certainly had the talent what was your favorite memory of ghostbusters one We'll start with Nick. Uh, my favorite part of Ghostbusters 1 was, you know, first seeing the Proton Pack and then fighting Slimer in the, the, what do you call it, the hotel ballroom and then sitting there. And then, of course, you know, Bankman going when uh, Egon's sitting there shooting and Slimer's already gone and he <laughs> continues to shoot up the bar and Bankman's like, whoa, nice shooting, Tex. That was always my favorite part of the first movie, always. And I sit there and I just, you know, I piss my wife off constantly because I will quote the movie as it's going. And she just looks at me and goes, I hate you so much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but but that was always the best part because I always loved And like I said, that was part of the reason why I loved Nightman because he was just, his quips just always got me, even as a kid. Can I ask no. a question real quick on that? Yeah. Go. You I don't know if this is in a behind the scenes anywhere. I've I've not seen it in, in different things I've watched. Do you think that he was meant to continue shooting like that? Because when I when I saw it, I was like, oh, I wonder if 
they last minute or not last minute, but in the editing, they move Slimer out the way and he's still going. Yeah. And he didn't know that's when they were supposed to cut or if they were just like, oh, we'll just pretend, you know, like I, I that's one of those. Like, I wonder if it was like an improv type or or it was a what do you call it? Like a like a move, movie mistake that just worked, you know, like I wonder if it was one of those. It very well what do you say, been. Nick? I think it, it very well could have been. But it just like you said, like Archer said, it, it worked. It was yes, perfect. Yeah. Well, to a degree. Canon, canon wise, we don't know whether the Ghostbusters actually tar- tried doing target practice with the with the packs, mm. because that very that very night before they get the call, you can see Egon working on a on another Neutrona wand. You know, while while Venkman and um and Ray are eating uh Chinese food. You can see Vank, or you can see Egon working on a wand. So for all we know, I mean, canon wise, hypothetically, this could be the first time that even Egon is firing the thrower. And it could, I mean, it could be that you know he you know underestimated the power coming through his wands. You know, it, it could be something like that, or maybe he was could be the thrill, could be any number of things, could it be uh an accident. I think it's definitely open to everyone's interpretation, but in my mind, I always looked at it like these are the first times that they're using the wands. Yeah. Like even like, especially I'm going to go with that based on the elevator. Like when they first turn on the wands or turn, turn on the pack. And then yeah. you see, uh, you see the other two kind of like back up a little bit because like they, they don't know, is there going to be a radiation leak? You know, uh, what, what's, what's going to happen? Is this going to blow up? They don't know. And you know, like we see, you know, Ray shooting the the you know maid's cart for the first time. You know, it's like it they it almost seems like they just didn't practice with the wands. Like, hey, let's just go into the field with these untested nuclear accelerators on our backs. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh Archer, what is your favorite scene? You know, I think I'm gonna go with this will be unconventional. But I think it's any time they're just going around the city because as a New Yorker, right, I always appreciate just seeing movies with New York City in it. But when the movie was done, I felt like New York City itself was like a character. Like, I, I know that it's the, the setting, but I don't know. It felt like as they were going from part of town to part of town and just going around and when all the New Yorkers show up at the end to see like what's happening at Dana's building. I felt like New York City in itself was like a character and I liked seeing that version, the the 70s version, or I guess what they're filming probably 81. So like, you know, that, that, yeah, yeah, we're, we're the seventies are just about to end New York City. Like there's still some old school cars. There's still a couple of bell bottoms walking around, like just seeing that part of New York City, that, that romanticized version of New York City. That that's well, what I really enjoyed. Well, I can definitely appreciate that because I mean the movie itself was made kind of guerrilla style. They didn't yes. exactly have permits say. for for most of it. Yeah. So it was yeah. definitely guerrilla style. Like I mean, I love when you get the reporter standing on the street, and then you get the you know the guy who's just like playing with his beard and his denim uh, coat and his denim jacket and jeans, just like like he's yeah. like he's trying to photo bomb. Yeah. I mean, New York City definitely is its own character. I mean. Yeah. I've been to New York several times now, and there's always something that like just it kind of blows you away. I mean, mm-hmm. there's always something that is like you get, you know, maybe it's a character of people, or maybe hey, you go from one spot to another, you know, two blocks away, you have Chinatown, and then you come across this other district, and it's just like, yeah, it's definitely its own character. So yeah. I mean, that I mean, you know, let's let's be honest. I mean. New York City is New York City. I don't think there's another city like it in the world anywhere. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Colin. Man, this is actually a hard question. I'm sitting here thinking about it. Didn't you, but, didn't, uh, didn't you review the historical documents? Well, well, yeah, but I'm saying like, you know, just think like I love like the whole movie and the feel of the whole movie, but I'm, I'm going to go with like what made me happiest growing up and like thinking about it. It would either be you know, the beginning with Slimer and uh, them destroying the sh- everything with the wands or the Stay Puff Man. I mean, that's what really drew me to those movies back in the day. And 
I'm gonna go with that for dude. I live with a friggin' state puff. I yeah, just, I mean, I don't no, know how no, you can. No, my wife, <laughs> uh, she she has a uniform, but uh, ninety percent of the time she's lady state puff with our group. She oh, she nice. has several state puff outfits, including one that has like a burnt kind of like she did like a tea stain thing for doing like the burnt marshmallow man. She has a baby carrier that she has one a couple of years ago. Walmart had the uh, 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 Halloween greeters, the plush ones, and she actually puts it in the baby carrier. And like that, like people are just like blown away by it. it's just a very simple outfit, but it's because <laughs> usually you see, oh, the Ghostbusters is showing up. You're going to see a bunch of guys in in khaki flight suits with the proton packs. Wait a minute, they got they got Stay Puff here. Right. Yeah, sometimes we do do some posing where we're blasting her. But you know, it's 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 yeah, I mean Stay Puff's always been a big favorite. And of course, now after afterlife, you know, apparently the mini puffs are here to stay. In fact, my wife is working on some cosplay stuff with that right now as we speak, actually. So that was genius for them to bring those mini puffs into it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it kind of has like a a gremlins vibe but not as menacing yeah well it's cool i mean you couldn't no. you couldn't bring back the stay puff man you know but they they brought back a, like a little piece in of the them, cartoon you know? so, though they did did they oh s- several I times mean, you like, can they, they kept, well they had them in the containment unit they broke them out a few times one time uh, as a replacement to a uh a thanksgiving day parade uh balloon that was destroyed <laughs> Murray the mantis <laughs> So I mean, yeah, I, yeah, they, you know, they, they made Stay Puff a bit of a good guy then. So I mean, I'm but glad yeah, you yeah. mentioned the cartoon because I bought season one. Like I watched all the free ones on oh. YouTube, but I bought season one on Amazon. I mean, Amazon on you iTunes. You want to go on ten bucks? Amazon. They have Extreme Ghostbusters that just came yep. on yes. DVD yep. and Blu-ray. Um, they just had to set, and it's actually a pretty decent price. So if you're, you're you know, especially if you're a fan of physical media. Nowadays, I mean, that's kind of a good, solid argument right now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Extreme so, is the only one I've never watched. I've never watched it, Extreme. It's an interesting take. Um, long short of it is this. Ghostbusters have disbanded. They've gone on their own separate ways, but Egon still lives at the firehouse. He kind of watches over the containment unit while being a college professor, although he only gets a handful of students. Some... You know, some construction workers uh, in the subway unearth a, like, I guess, uh, an unknown tomb of all these supernatural baddies. It's like a portal. Yeah. And so what happens is then Egon decides that he's going to try and take him on. He breaks out his old equipment. It's just not strong enough. And he gets an affliction. It's kind of a wart type virus. So now his college students, with his guidance, improve new gear. And now they are going out in the ecto and they're busting ghosts. So I mean, it's 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 a it's a fun series. It's done in if you ever saw the Men in Black cartoons, it's yeah. done in that wow. kind That's of animation movie. style. Same studio, yeah. Yeah, yeah and it was the, it was the same year too. It came out. It was ninety seven. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. but it was it was a nice fun update. They got Maurice Lamarche, the original voice of Egon from the real Ghostbusters. And uh, I think it was a season, I want to say, was it like a season two? They did a, a they did like a two-part episode where they got most of the original voices. Um, they got Dave Coulier to come back as Bankman, mm-hmm. um, Frank Walker back as Ray. Um, of course, Winston had a couple different voices over the years. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a fun little what-if continuation. Obviously, that wouldn't work canon-wise now with Egon you know, no longer being with us, or maybe there's a way they can write it. Who knows? I would say that I, I think you could fit it in if yeah. you know because he's older when Afterlife happens. So yeah. But I was so, going mean, to say the episode I just watched yesterday of Real Ghostbusters is when they explain why Slimer is allowed to be there, and okay, that's an episode <laughs> where because of this picture, their suits came to life with the yes ecto version yep. we, yeah, we, yeah. We, and those were actually a figure set i think by diamond select they did a, a special set where you had the spectral ghostbusters spectral ghosts yeah 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 but yeah that that was that was kind of a freaky episode i mean real ghostbusters they had some pretty scary monsters 
I mean, yeah. if you really think about it, like compared to like stuff nowadays, I mean, they had some pretty scary stuff. And I mean, these were shows that were written by uh, people who would go on to make like Babylon Five and Star Trek and like so much adult type stuff that it was just, you know, like I mean, Boogeyman scared the crap out of a lot of people. Yeah. Um, it's one of the that. one of the ones that always freaked me out was uh, there, I forgot what the episode is called, but the Ghostbusters wind up in a parallel dimension Welcome where there are New York the, City. Yes, where you the where busters. there was people busters. There was three oh, spectral versions awesome. of them, <laughs> like all decomposed and de- decayed, except they didn't have a, a Winston for some reason. But they would go around trying to capture humans. It was a complete flip side. I that was always that. a freaky episode. That was yeah, one that always one. sticks with me. Yeah. Oh yeah. That I was mean, always one of my favorite episodes. I mean. I don't want to be that person, but like when they started doing Slimer in the real Ghostbusters, the Slimer episodes were just like they were kind of like Tom and Jerry, you know, Bugs Bunny style slapstick. And I think that kind of like that's where the sliding away with all some of the fans were mm. like, oh, well, I don't want to watch this goofy stuff because they kind of did all the scary action stuff that they really could do. Yeah. I'm curious to see where the crossover into the into frozen empire is because i like i want to get the comic book that that i think is coming out this month in fact i think it's this week i think ain't it yeah it might be this week yeah yeah unless you want to wait around for the hard copy from amazon sometime next this coming fall which yeah it's october (laughs) i mean october is my birthday month i wouldn't mind it but you know i think i want to get my hands on the comic and see you know what actually you know them you know the family acclimating to uh new york city will be mm-hmm. they're back for good well at least that's my hope i hope the ghostbusters are here to stay i mean we're kind of in a golden age right now yeah that's for sure i'm well think about it we got two ghostbuster movies within the last what three four years mm-hmm. and if you really think mm-hmm. about it including answer the call which i know some people view differently it's technically three ghostbuster movies within a 10 year time span so that's something to be said about that yeah because i mean long as- we had to wait five years after ghostbusters one to get a sequel Mm-hmm. Ghostbusters 2 and that honestly was a bit of a battle because they had to go through there's so many different drafts I mean it's said that the studio kind of like had them rewrite it so many times that it got so diluted and let's be honest Ghostbusters 2 although it's a sweet spot for a lot of people it it feels a little watered down compared to the first one in some respects you know it's your secret view. <laughs> Literally, well, yeah, because we have ooze, we have a river of slime, so yes, it is a secret of the ooze. But in but in terms of the second one being like purely kitty for for the audience, although I mean, I guess you could say the villain may, might have been more scary, but I feel like the way that it was, the way the actors were, and the way that it, the vibe, yeah, exactly, it feels more kiddied up than the first one. Yeah, I mean, well, I Vigo, they did that mostly because it was still in the age of the real Ghostbusters, <clears throat> mm-hmm. and they were trying to kind of feed off the real Ghostbusters energy and feed off the original movie's energy. Yeah, but they wanted to continue it on because even after the real Ghostbusters continued on, you know, they, they, they kind of went off of everything from the second movie. Yeah. So it was kind of like a an in between. And that's why it was a little more cartoony than you know the original. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, we got that's when they started doing Slimer and the Real Ghostbusters because they gave us Lewis, you know, mm-hmm. with as goofy as it was. And honestly, the voice actor did a real good job of being a uh, Lewis Tully kind of, you know. But uh, yeah, I, I in the you know in Real when Real Ghostbusters first came out, we get like one or two name drops that kind of refer to the oh no, there's three episodes that make references to the original movie because there's they even take the ghostbusters to hollywood so they can make the movie and they mm-hmm. actually begin with the little uh with you know vink 
go to hell vinkman uh mm -hmm. on the door so i mean they they do they do some sprinkling there but uh yeah i mean that's real ghostbusters were really, really great i mean ghostbusters 2 we had we had uh vigo was voiced by max von Sydow. yep so i mean they had some great people in there and those that might have played real ghostbusters uh the video or the uh ghostbusters the video game and the video game remastered Max von Sydow came back and voiced uh, Vigo again because mm -hmm. we had the Vigo painting in the firehouse just sitting there, and you can actually talk with him a couple times. Uh, and that that's another thing. I mean, Ghostbusters, the video game, was kind of like an unofficial third Ghostbusters, to be, to be mm -hmm. fully honest, yeah. because it plays like it. You know, It's a fun game, and I still play it every now and again. Okay, so here we are back in business. After the events of Afterlife, the remaining Spangler clan plus one summer school teacher moved to NYC <laughs> to embrace their legacy and take the family business. This, this is what we kind of know from the trailers, right? Now, I, how do you feel feel about that? Do you think it took much convincing for Callie to say, "Yeah, let let let's move to New York City and let's be Ghostbusters"? I don't know. I mean, it could have, but, you know, she was down in, the, in their luck. You know, they got evicted, yeah. and they ended up moving to Somerville, Oklahoma, to live in this ran-down, dilapidated house <laughs> that he got owned. And, I mean, it, as, you know, Finn Wolfhart, when he walks in, Trevor, he goes, wow, this is so much worse than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> so it's just, it's, I, I don't think it took much pulling of her leg at all. Or, or, hey, do you remember that summer we, when we almost died underneath the table? <laughs> yeah. But I guess also after you get possessed by, you know, Zool, you, you, your mind is kind of open and brought into like, hey, yeah, my my young my youngest child can rock a proton pack and capture ghosts. I think maybe I can do the same damn thing. You know, I mean, maybe. both both her kids were rocking proton packs. I mean, her son, Trevor, driving the Ecto-1, driving a 59 Caddy for someone who doesn't actually have his driver's license. I mean, her, her kids are pretty damn capable, let's be honest. I would have been in that cool. car so damn fast. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, if you've ever ridden in a 59 Caddy, that thing does not exactly move so easily. You kind of have to... You kind of have to take a course in, in in driving in one of those, and you can feel it just as a passenger. I, uh, I one of the things I'm I'm kind of hope I was thinking about it as as you were talking. I almost hope they pull like a Ghostbusters one here, where they don't even explain like how they got there. Like I I remember I, I bought that Visual Dictionary for uh, Ghostbusters one. I think it's one and two, and a little bit of Afterlife. Oh, not Afterlife. Um. 2016 like i feel like 2016 was like in production when that book was written but okay. there's a part where they're like oh we decided to just randomly like just skip all the the like how do they make the packs how do they learn <laughs> to be a team all these things and just like get to it and i almost kind of wish they do that here in a way of paying homage like don't even explain okay. it. like i know the comics coming out but like for in the movie like like, why would podcast leave his family to go with them to live in New York City? Just skip it. He's just there. <laughs> <laughs> like, just his, his, do the damn his, thing. his podcast gets his podcast gets picked up for syndication by uh, Zedmore Industries. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, the Zedmore bot. Hey, it, or, or it, it really it really found its voice in the 40, 46 episode. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, yeah, it's it's definitely going to be uh, interesting to see what happens. I want to welcome uh, Hoodie Bros. Welcome to the chat. We're just talking. We're doing a little pregame uh, for Ghostbusters. None of us have seen it yet uh, for uh, Frozen Empire. I'm looking forward to do, for doing it on Thursday. But uh, well, I don't know. Yeah, depending I mean, on depending on all those trailers, we might have seen it already. Yeah, I've, <laughs> right? well, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I've only seen I've seen the first trailer. I've seen the second trailer and then the international trailer. Those are the three trailers I've seen. So I've I've been pretty good. I've been 
pretty decent. Well, like I to, to back I also, up EP, though, I went back and watched the Afterlife trailers yes. long after seeing the movie. I was like, damn, there's a lot of this movie in these trailers. Yes, there is. But I mean, uh, th- there there's a lot that's not in there though. There, there there are some really good scenes that aren't in there. Yeah. But yeah, like they kind of spoiled the mini puffs and you know that kind of stuff. But I'm I'm excited for it. But like uh, like you said, I mean, yeah, they can definitely you know skip over some stuff. I mean, obviously we see them wearing new uniforms or clean uniforms, I should say, instead of the forty year old musty grandpa uniform, <laughs> <laughs> which I mean. I would hope maybe they did, you know, maybe burn or dispose of the uniforms properly, unlike real Ghostbusters. So, I mean, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. Um, it's going to be interesting to see. I mean, now that they're funded by by Winston, you know, Winston is Tony Stark. Winston is, you know, Nick Fury. He, he's... He's got all, all the good stuff. I mean, the trailer, look, the trailer looks great. Um, but, yeah... Seeing uh and part part of my use of language, folks, but seeing Dickless in City Hall, um, <laughs> uh, seeing Pecker there, uh, I'm just like, how did he get? In, I mean, one, we don't know if he's at the actual mayor. It doesn't look like the mayor's office. He might be maybe a deputy mayor or maybe someone who's working their way up. Because obviously, being in the EP, EPA. And obviously, you know, after Ghostbusters one, you know, Ghostbusters two, we find out that the that the guys were sued by every city, county, and state in in the entirety of New York. So I mean, obviously, that must have elevated Peck as far as in his bureaucratic power, because I'm sure he was the front runner in suing them. You know, he was probably leading the charge. So it's going to well, be if interesting. You, if you read some of the comic books too, like I have a bunch of, I picked up a bunch of comics the past three, four years, and he actually creates what they call Peacock, <laughs> and he runs Peacock, which, which and, is referenced in the in the video game. Yes, and the Ghostbusters essentially have to answer to him, and they can only do contracts that he allows. So I'm wondering if this is kind of a peacock situation. Uh. And no, we're not talking to streaming service kids. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's definitely going to going to be interesting to see what happens. Uh, I mean, let's be honest. The family that busts together and stays together, and <laughs> I mean, you got to love that Phoebe is still hanging out the side of the Ecto in New York City. Let's be honest. Uh, driving a caddy full speed in New York City. I'm well, just driving in New York City is pretty damn dangerous, all yeah. onto yeah. itself. Let alone look how cherry the, the caddy looks right there. I mean, she oh, looks stop. fantastic. I mean, I there, almost think that that was uh, Ecto and Jay for uh, <laughs> I don't care what anybody says, time. there is there is no cooler movie vehicle than the Ecto. No, not at all. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's, I mean, I love Back to the Future. You know, the DeLorean's great and all, but at least the Ecto, the engine turns every time. Yes. <laughs> you don't have to worry about the starter on that one. And it just takes regular gasoline. This might it be might like for... in time. It might sputter and spit, but you know what? It's still going to run. Still going to run. I would say no. this might be a question for Ecto NJ, actually. Or sorry, Ecto Tech. To be like, which one does he prefer? Well, I know. Well, here, here, here's here's a better question. Which version of the car does he does he prefer? Does he prefer Ecto One or Ecto One A? And will we find out what happened to Ecto One A? Mm. Because I mean, there's a lot of conjecture that they were that they were two different cars. Yep. Because if you watch Ghostbusters One, uh or sorry, Ghostbusters 2, there is technically an Ecto-1 license plate, a new Ecto-1 license plate when they pick up, they try to pick up uh, Peter and Dana to go to the sewer, go to the train tunnels. And then, of course, we get the regular Ecto-1A. That was a movie flub that they have because, uh, was it Hollywood, uh, was it Hollywood Collectibles? Or the Hollywood license plate company 
they actually released those. And I do have Ecto one from the first movie, Ecto one, and then Ecto one A up on my uh, upper wall here. So I do have those. Um, I mean, honestly, I got to go with this one. I got to go with regular Ecto one because two reasons. Ecto one A had way too much equipment on it. Way too much equipment. I would worry about either low lines clipping it or the weights. But yeah, just just Ecto one all the way for me, Colin. Which Ecto is your favorite? Oh, the first one, definitely. First one. Yeah. And Nick. Definitely the first one. And Archer, you already said that the the first one was your favorite, right? Yeah, yeah. I I'm just gonna try to reference something as you, but keep going. grab the uh the visual book because i want to hey i have a book you don't have he put he pulled out the encyclopedia i did hey archer (laughs) i have a book you don't have oh there you go nice the art of bill of being bill but what i'm getting a kick out of obviously in the trailer we see that they have a drone right Mm mm-hmm Correct me if I'm wrong. That looks like the same remote control they use for the remote control of the uh, trap in Afterlife. You see Trevor kind of hunching mm-hmm. over. It looks just like the same remote control. Oh, actually, um, sorry. I, I did want to comment on a picture real quick. I was thinking about this yes. earlier. I kind of wish Trevor was driving. Like I wish they <laughs> just kind of like commit to him being the gearhead of the group. Yeah. And that he was the one driving this. And uh, what's his face being on the remote? Gruberson. Yeah. Well, I mean, one Gruberson. I mean, he's you know, it's you know, he's probably like, well, no, I'm driving. I'm older than you. Could <laughs> just be just to justify it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and plus, he he probably can be insured, and maybe Trevor maybe <laughs> yeah. not so much in New York City. Let's be honest. That is actually very accurate. And also, we don't know what kind of time jump we're facing here, too, because, I mean. Some people think, oh, you know, they, they, you know, this is them maybe a couple months in. For all we know, this could be them a couple years in because both Trevor, I mean, Trevor and, you know, Phoebe obviously look a little, little, little older. Phoebe's definitely taller, you know. Now, do you think there's going to be a time jump or do you think they're going to, this is where this is going to pick up right when they're rolling into New York? Well, I mean, I, I want to say that there's going to be some kind of a, a jump. You know, it could be five, six months, could be eight months, could be a year. Because, I mean, obviously, they're moved into the firehouse. We can see them wearing robes. And, you know, obviously, they got to be well-versed in the equipment, maintaining the equipment itself. And obviously, come on, Winston's not going to have the Ecto-1 fixed in, like, a weekend. It's going to take a while to restore the Ecto-1. You know? And personally, if I was restoring an Ecto-1, I would reach out to Ecto-1 uh, or Ecto-Tech on Instagram. And can, <laughs> can you uh, make me full screen or or do the... Yes, I can be Rita Repulsa make you big. <laughs> make my make our archer big. grow. Um, One second. We're gonna... I, I do wish that this was a thing um, to really make... Wait. So Which one, one the, in one the taxi? Any of them, but I mean the okay. taxi one I do like because that again of the times, and you know shout out Danny DeVito and Taxi, I, I yeah. think that would have been cool. Um, but making them like really drastically different, I think would have been a good move. Yeah, but I really, 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 if Hasbro somehow watches this stream, like you should do a concept figure line. Where like Emily this, from Hasbro, if you're listening, listen yeah, up this, to Hey Archer right now. This should be a thing. Like you drop out of this book variants of things we never got. Because I do like this idea of all right, we lost the Ecto one somehow, or we sold it to make money because we went broke. Like they, you know, like they allude to in in part two, and then they're like, all right, we're back in business. Shit, we don't have a car, so. Uh, go to the junkyard and just put something together, you know, and, and you, you get this hodgepodge of 
pieces of different vehicles, you know, like I, I think that would have been pretty cool to to see. Like seeing this in the book, I was actually really surprised that that did not make the movie. Well, there was uh, now the one picture you showed, which kind of looks like they took like a Lincoln Town car and stretched it out, like they yeah. took a limo and yep. made it. There was an episode where Ghostbusters, like one of them got like hit the lottery or something like that. It might have been Vankman or someone. They, they somehow got like a boatload of money. They came up with like they bought like a brand new version of the Ecto, like kind of town car like, but still had like the wagon style hatch in the back and everything. But then they eventually reverted back to the old Ecto. So I mean, they they kind of did something similar in real Ghostbusters. But I agree, it would be cool. And let's be honest, Hasbro has blown money on crossovers before. I mean, we had the uh, you know they did the Transformers uh, Ectotron. They did two variations mm -hmm. of that, which I have. Um, I mean, yeah, why not just like you know do a concept, do a concept. I mean, it could even be like, even if you didn't give us the full blown car, give us like a, a model kit or like a Hot Wheels or something like that. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, remember you know, Ghostbusters too? They had that giant garbage truck that was a trap. They had that little, what they called what was it, Ecto Two, the little. Ecto two was the helicopter. Thing they had. Yep. And they of course, had... remember, remember Ecto three, the little motorcycle that would like expand yep, out. Yep, yep. And they had that, and you know, in the what was it, Slimer in the real Ghostbusters, the kids had that little thing with like the big ass yeah. fly swatters on it. So there were so course, many different variations of the Ecto. Well, extreme Ghostbusters. We, you know, they had more of a more of an off-roady kind of extreme looking uh yep. ecto one it didn't look like a true caddy anymore you know it had a bunch a uh, bunch of like you had roll cages and stuff all over it so i mean yeah they can do a lot of different stuff right there yeah and i think that was the one the, the extreme or extreme ghost bus was the one they considered that was the hearse that's why a Archer lot of people found something. To it as a hearse whereas the original one was the ambulance yeah yes yep what did oh, you say? Find? The, the Ecto submarine. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that gives me magic school books. A school it bus. Does. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it does. I mean, yeah. You, yeah. you basically put. You had a bunch of life rafts underneath it. Yep. And you know, speaking of like Ecto tech and everything, I actually picked up a patch. Oh, couple, I hate a couple you. weeks ago. Hate that guy full screen. What are you doing? Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, that guy yeah. doesn't need full screen. <laughs> that, yeah, I mean, wait, wait. I'm, which, I'm gonna have to message Ectotech now. Well, what gets priority? Would you put the R and D patch on your arm? Or are you gonna put that patch on your arm? Well, like the the shirt that I have on now, it's got all my different patches in the back. So I think this I have. I bought two. I bought three of them. I gave one to a buddy, and I bought two. One for this shirt, and I don't know. I was thinking actually of taking. The engineer patch that they created for the new movie, mm -hmm. buying another khaki flight suit, and seeing which version of the the tape they use, whether it be GB1 or GB2 tape, and making my own kind of Frozen Empire kind of flight suit, and maybe putting this under the Daytona logo. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. There's a lot of options. A ton of options. I mean, like mine, I got the uh, here on my right, my right arm. But then, of course, got to have my BGB on the other side. Here, you got a bigger, bigger version of it there, so people can see. There you go. Oh, nice. No, no, no I got a flex <laughs> archer now. Yeah. <laughs> you Buffalo get the gear shirt. There you go. I need you to know. get one of those, Dave. T public. Just go to the. Buffalo G Busters Facebook page and find yeah. a T Public link oh, right okay. there. Sweet. Yeah, like this one here. I have. Oh, that's cool. I love that. See, yeah, all my see, see, in the back of this one. He's full NASCAR. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's full NASCAR. He's got all the patches. <laughs> Don't make him go full NASCAR once he goes full NASCAR. <laughs> 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 It's 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 Talladega. Uh, it's Ghostbusters Talladega Nights. Right. <laughs> you don't catch the ghost first. You're last. Tropic Thunder Two. Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So, and of course, now we get old enemies, same attitude. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I'll say this: Atherton has aged pretty well for for forty years. Yeah, of course, mm-hmm. I'm sure that's a bit of dying on the top. Yeah. I mean, he's one of the consummate eighty bad guys. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> well, eighties and nineties. Uh, he was a bad guy in Biodome. Mm-hmm. A real genius with Val Kilmer. That's right. He was in Biodome. With that. Yeah, and he was that prick uh, reporter in Die Hard One and Two. And Two. Yep. I loved when the the wife tases him on a friggin' airplane. Hell yeah! <laughs> and it knocks him out in the first one. Yep. Yep. Of course, you know we get the mini puffs. And uh, yeah, my wife is working on this, by the way. Uh, the mini puff going into the pencil sharpener. She's working on that one right now. Uh, but yeah, it's, you know, we're going to see, you know, are these going to, are stay puffs are the mini puffs going to be good guys, bad guys, who knows? We'll see. But how do you feel about Peck being back? I know, I know we talked about Peacock a little bit. You think, you think that he's going to stay kind of a, a budding head overseer or you think that he might come around? I don't know. I mean, he was real adamant about hating the Ghostbusters, and even in, even when in the comic books as he ran Peacock, he still hated Venkman. Like him and Venkman were not friends, and they will never be friends. Oh, so no. I mean, and then you know, and and you know, when the firehouse explodes in the first one, and Egon attacks him, he is definitely not a fan. You know, they they are not fans of him. So I, I, think he's gonna stay. <laughs> I think he's going to stay. On his own side, honestly. Yeah. I mean, there, there there are some sitcom-like situations I would love to see, but you know, it would just ru- ruin the uh, narrative for the movie. So, yeah, you know, like like make Hex like son fall or, or daughter fall in love with like uh, Oscar uh, Venkman's stepson from Dana, right? <laughs> and like now they're in laws. That'd hey, be pretty funny, actually. Bill Murray, you want to do a TV show? We'll, we'll set you up with a sitcom. Come on. We already just wrote it right here. That'd but, I mean, you know, it's good to have the old enemies, but at least they're not rehashing. I mean, yeah, they did rehash Gozer in the last one, right? A lot of people were afraid that they were going to rehash Vigo. Yeah. Don't do that. You don't need that. Yeah. yeah. Real Ghostbusters showed us that there are so many baddies out there. Yeah. That I mean, e- well, even Peck appeared in uh, the real Ghostbusters once. Yep. You know, but I mean, you know, you can give us, you know, some familiarity, but you know, give us brand new ghosts, and I love what they're doing so far. I mean, how menacing is Garaka right there? An ancient e- evil awakens that sends the Busters on a mission to save the world again. I mean. Everything just looks great. Uh, I'm wondering if this is the uh, library, the very first library where Ray, Peter, and Venkman went to. Mm. Where they found the gray that. lady. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd because be cool. like, be. like some of these shelves and like the stairwells, they look like kind of what we see in uh, Ghostbusters, the video game, which that's what kind of makes me think that this is the actual Metropolitan Library. Yeah. I'm curious, yeah, is this, sense. where yeah. the hell is this from? I mean, in, in the trailer, we do see, uh, I'm blanking on his name right now. Uh, K- Kumir? K- I'm blanking on his name. Yeah, I, I'm I actually apologize. not remembering his name either. The guy from Eternals. Yes. <laughs> but like, like him, it's like, well, actually, I, you know where I recognize him? I want to say I recognize him from, uh. There's a show on TNT years ago called Franklin and Bash. Mm-hmm. Mark, wow. Mark Paul Gossler is a lawyer. Wow. wow. Yeah. Yeah. And I think he was like one of their assistants or something. But uh, but yeah, like we see him bring the, the orb from to Ray. Trip, isn't that right? Huh? The guy from Road Trip is the other? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Jeez. Yeah. Good callback. <laughs> but like, like obviously, like, I'm wondering if this is like his, like, you know his relatives home or whatever where he found the ore because i'm like look at all this stuff right here man you know it'd be funny if uh they pull a sixth sense and he's a ghost because the way that they're looking and he's just staying there i'm like 
It's almost like they don't even see him. That mean, well, he was a ghost. Well, we know, and he's even said it. It takes a lot of inspiration from real Ghostbusters. We did have good ghosts. We had yeah. Sherlock Holmes manifested mm-hmm. into a ghost, even though he really wasn't alive. Uh, we also had uh, Elliot Ness. I think that was Citizen Ghost. I could be wrong. I think that was mm-hmm. the name of the episode. So, I mean, we have had good ghosts. I mean, Hell, the Ghostbusters even went back in time once and captured the ghosts of past, present, and future and saved Scrooge. Yep. yep. Saved Scrooge, and then they had to restore them. Yep. I mean, we, we, we've we had good ghosts. So, I mean, you know, is it out of the realm of possibility? I'm going to say no. Slimer. Is it likely? I mean, we've only seen a ghost on screen actually appear as a normal human being but they are still transparent, that being the Egon, obviously. Yeah. So, I mean, but, yeah, I mean, like, we're go- we're going to some places we haven't seen before. I mean, obviously, Ray is buying anything occult, and I'm sure Winston is footing the bill on it, let's be honest. I mean, if Ray's paying good money for anything that's occult-like, yeah, it's it's got to be Winston's money, let's be honest. And uh, go, ste- uh, stepping back on that, I always thought that maybe... Winston lent uh, money to to Egon to buy the farm to begin with. A little seed money, so to speak. That always uh, popped in my head because, I mean, if they really went broke, did Egon really have enough to go and buy a farm in the middle of nowhere and to buy the resort, you know, whatever resources he might need to begin whatever mission he was going on other than just stealing all the traps and packs? Yeah, but we also don't know what kind of money Egon had because you got to yeah. think. Callie will just say she's my age, 38, in afterlife. Obviously, she's not just going to be a little older than that. But you got to think, where in between the beginning of one and the end of, we'll just say, the video yeah. game before afterlife even comes around, did he have time to have a family? Mm-hmm. So we don't know what kind of – who he – what he married into as far as money wise yeah and there's a lot of discussions on on uh all the threads out there of course there's a lot of discussions oh he he had her between one and two or but all that's kind of mute i mean but but yeah i mean there's a lot of discussions um now i'm guessing that this is after our young scientist uh you know injures his hand because it looks like he he's rocking a sling right here, the one who's standing behind Trevor. He's one of the uh, one of uh, Winston's employees in the research facility, obviously. But I'm guessing that th- this definitely definitely isn't the research facility. But I mean, come on, tell me this isn't the scariest looking thing we've seen in live action Ghostbusters so far. Oh, for sure. Oh yeah, Baraka. I mean, she looks fierce. Yeah, I didn't know and, it was she. Well, it's an it's an actress who's actually voicing her. Uh, that's that's been found through IMDb. Wow. So yeah, uh, but hey, it, Garaka could still be a hey, could be he, or it could just be a they, could just be a, you know an entity. So we don't know. Um, my theory here course, has been that they. Be, like there's those in the clips you know they're in the the lab it's a larger containment yeah. unit all that stuff i was like oh i wonder if the coney island scene like where where lucky gets you know frozen there i wonder if there's a lab out there in coney island and then garaka is working I'll, I'll follow your lead here her way to the firehouse for some reason and they're all like trying to stop her from hitting the firehouse. Like, I wonder if that's like the well, the we, path. We, def- we definitely hear that you know Garaka wants this wants you know wants to raise an army of the dead, an army of of ghosts. Mm. So obviously, I mean, the containment our OG containment unit has to be the source that Garaka is heading towards. Now we don't know how many ghosts Winston might have at the research center. But that's another question. There might be a larger number in the containment unit at the firehouse because, I mean, we don't know what, uh, because obviously 
Egon and Ray built built that one. They're you know, and I'm guessing that Ray might have helped uh, Winston and his scientists build the one at the research facility. So there might be some missing element that only Egon knew to maybe the one at the firehouse is just so expansive dimension wise, you know, kind of doctor who like bigger on the inside, you know, because how else are they able to hold the ghosts there? I mean, there's a lot of questions, but of course we're going to find that out this week in a couple more days. Um, But you know, like this, this image of lucky, do you really think that they're going to kill her off? I don't think so. I think it's like a near, like they're they're taking her to the edge, but they're kind of like faking the fans a little bit. Yeah, because l- let's be honest, her father would go ape shit, and she gets killed in New York, New York City. Oh, you mean like and, in the franchise? Or, or yeah, in the movie. Yeah, yeah. In the movie. yeah. Her her father would go ape. He he yeah, would Bo- go hunt them down like a dog. <laughs> oh, Bo- would find. He's he's a great actor too. Oh yeah, he's a great actor. Yeah, I- that I mean, he never got never got the credit i mean he's appeared in a lot of stuff and i just think he was never marketed properly you know no and i was surprised no. to see him pop up in afterlife i was like oh okay i was kind of hoping he was going to have a bigger role in afterlife just yeah. just a smidge bigger but when he says who are you going to call i mean it just <laughs> brought goosebumps oh. i mean not even gonna yeah. lie <laughs> oh just her dad in the movie not in real life yeah 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 Woke, uh, oh, wow. i was like yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? <laughs> no, 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 no. Of course, new resources, new gear, because why not? Winston's hooking them up like a tow truck. I mean, there's the orb, of course, now after, because obviously it's good to know that he's not losing his hands because we see him reaching for the orb and then like his hand is covered in frost. Yep. So it's in. I'm guessing he's he's gonna be. I think uh, this is. I think this might be like a new Egon potentially for for the crew. Yeah. Not not them saying that Phoebe isn't capable, but this is obviously someone who's already gone to school. It probably has his PhDs and degrees. Probably is gonna know a little bit more than what Phoebe would. Although Phoebe did, you know, fix a proton pack. So. Yeah. Yes, she did. But. I mean, we it's cool. We we get podcasts, looking around, and I mean, look at how how much how much he's grown in like two or three years. Same thing for McKenna, but I mean, with McKenna, you know, you can hide it a little bit with the wig and stuff, such, but you got the kids getting taller and taller, so they have to. I, at least I would hope they would explain uh, that time jump. But like again, we'll we'll see what happens. I mean. Do you guys think there's a uh, functional reason for the bumper or no? I think so. Um, I'm going to say that there has to be because one, we see in one of the trailers, we see one proton pack with an exposed cyclotron. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm thinking that along with the uh, new, new muzzle barrel right here, the, the aluminum tube that we have covering the wands, that that somehow reinforced because we we can see that the wand when Lucky is and in the trailer I'm guessing that Lucky's actually trying to defend Phoebe because we can hear her saying get away from her at least that's what I've heard when I when I watch it it sounds like get away from her mm-hmm. so it almost makes me think because and also in the trailer they kind of hints uh, with Phoebe playing chess with a ghost in Central Park. That she has some kind of a, I hate to say this, but she's got kind of a Winona Ryder, Beetlejuice kind of vibe going on where she can see or she can sense things because of her experience with her grandfather, possibly. That maybe she has a connection. I hope that that's not Egon's ghost that she's playing chess with because we would hope that Egon, you know, you know, he obviously, you know, ascended to yeah. whatever spiritual plane. Yeah. And, you know, I think that he should be left there yeah okay because well what every time something happens we're going to have the ghost of egon come to the rescue we can't have that you know that's going to be like oh you know we need batman now or we need superman no we we can't have that the ghostbusters have to find themselves in weird situations could it be another ghost you know could it be ghost of lewis tully or something i don't know 
could be any kind of a ghost out there. But that makes me think that there's something special about Phoebe. You know? And maybe Garaka is after Phoebe because of that connection. That maybe she thinks or it thinks that Phoebe could be some kind of a vessel or some kind of a, a forced ally because of her sensitivity to the spiritual, spiritual world, perhaps. I mean, that's just a guess right there. But, I mean, the proton pack itself, I mean, we have this bumper here, this third this third arm. So that makes me think that it, it's meant there for some kind of additional reinforcement. The muzzle... And also this this extra bar here, this extra plate underneath the heat sink, I'm thinking that all of these are meant to uh, reinforce the particle stream because we can see the streams actually being frozen, which I don't think any of us thought were possible. But then again, we never thought that a ghost or supernatural entity could pull cross streams apart like we did in Afterlife. So, I mean... Yeah. You know, I can see that, but we have a lot more upgrades going on. There's kind of like almost like a fuse box going on here with the additional wiring. There's yep. an additional bar right here. This part is completely replaced. It's no longer black. It's all silver. We can't see your mouse, by the way, in case you're I'm sorry. Yeah, I was I was moving the mouse around. Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> but there's I mean, there's a lot of upgrades on here. They changed some of the hoses on here, some of the wires. There's a lot of changes to the proton pack. Uh I do dig the hazard striping on the side. Yes. By the power cell. I do dig that. And yes, I did do that to my pack. I had to. And I do have a bumper coming. I'm I literally want to make my, my hands lab look like a uh an after or a frozen empire pack. But something that someone someone in this chat said, I think someone had in this chat had uh, hinted about it would be cool to have a uh 80 or no it was uh it was it was a uh, rambling nerd that said it i think in this video was it video came out yesterday or day before that it'd be cool if they did an 84 pack yeah i think uh, either you or or anthony had said that i mean i could see something like that as a has lab i think that would be cool i think we're gonna discuss that a little bit later but i mean we got new gear and come on that van the Ecto Z. I mean, it's kind of cool that we, you know, one we're you know we're bringing out the gear, tons of packs for everybody. Everyone gets a pack. It's like Oprah, you get a pack, you get a pack, you get a pack. Uh, and also, apparently, that's one of the sponsors for the movie is Mercedes because that's a Mercedes cargo van. Mm -hmm. Again. We get the old en old enemies, but now we get the old friends reunite with the kids to show them how it's done. I love this scene that we got everybody except where's Phoebe? Yeah. So it, it makes me a little, you know, it makes me wondering like, okay, where's this story going? Are they giving us too much information? I love how Ray is just kind of afraid to to, to even shoot. Yeah. Ray's just like petrified when like everyone's got their one got their uh neutrino wands out except for well podcast is rocking a pipe i don't know why mm -hmm. you know they they can't give them our an arm cannon like they gave janine but you know hey it is what it is i love seeing ray and or sorry uh seeing uh, winston and vankman side by side i mean just seeing seeing these images is it spoilery maybe to a certain extent but I guess we'll see what happens. I'm hoping this is just the tip of the iceberg. I hope they're not giving us too much information right away. Okay, so predictions. What do you guys want to see in the movie? What do you think we will see in the movie? And do you think the trailer is spoiled too much? Or do you think Sony was worried and felt they needed to guarantee a box office? I, I cut off box office right there. Box office draw. Considering the the Oscar worthy movie Madam Web earlier this year, uh, I mean Sony has not been hitting the home runs. Not really. I think like could Afterlife have been their their last real blockbuster hit? No, you had a uh, Spider Verse. Okay, yeah, and, uh, Spider Verse. No Way Home is or far from, whichever the home. No Way Home. Yeah, that. That's technically Sony too. Whatever home it is. 
But, yeah. <laughs> but over the course of two and a half years, though, that's about two or three movies right there. I don't think that that that's too good for their track record. I think they're, I, I felt like they were a little desperate. But tell me, what do you want to see in this movie, Archer? The floor is yours. Uh, oh, do you have uh, any wish list items that you want to see? Do you want me to go through all three bullets or just the first one? Go through the first one. <clears throat> um, I definitely want to see more ghost busting in this movie. Um, as silly as that may sound, I'd like them to to use the proton packs more than five times. I'll say five. More than five times in a movie. Usually it's, I think the average is like three per movie. So I, I'd go for her five. Holland? Well, I want to see a good movie with good story. I, I do want to see more ghost busting as well. I loved Afterlife, but, you know, they're, I just want to, I just want to see something with good story. You know, that's, I don't I don't have anything specific I want. I just want a good Ghostbusters movie, maybe setting, you know, further setting up the future of Ghostbusters. Nicholas. Well, David, I uh I don't know. Like I I don't want to set the bar too high cuz there if the movie does extremely well like we all hope it's going to do. I have a feeling you're just going to blow it out of proportion like Disney's doing with Marvel. Right. And I don't want that. But all in all, I do want to see a solid movie. I want to see a good storyline, like they said. Same thing with using the proton packs more than just two, three times. You know, and I want to see I want to see some new. How do I go about this? Some new uh, new tech, new directions. Okay. Like, they're already starting. Like, I feel like with the pack, I feel like the pack is kind of an extreme Ghostbusters type thing. Not boxy, obviously. No. But an extreme Ghostbusters type with the the mods and all that kind of stuff. So I kind of want to see them go slightly in that direction. So it opens up the world to where, you know, everything is being recognized not just one two and possibly the video game everything okay so now what archer and colin mentioned about seeing more ghost busting that i think was something that they definitely tried to do more in ghostbusters 2 opposed to ghostbusters 1 because we saw <coughs> excuse me we saw vankman catching the you know with the trap in the ground and catching the ghost jogger or them at the jewelry store or we saw them kind of like running around catching uh you know with with traps in their hands so we actually saw some it was a little bit more than what we saw in part one uh i definitely agree that we definitely need to see this new group of ghostbusters in action you know we need to see you know not just oh phoebe yeah phoebe's great for sitting in a gunner's chair but how great is she on her feet actually running around trying to catch a ghost especially in new york city you know cramped narrow uh art you know alleyways and you know poor apartment buildings that you know you walk you know the stairs you run up the stairs and your foot goes right through the, the staircase itself so i mean there's a lot of possibility uh i've actually heard some people say that there's a lot of comedy to this contrary to how it looks but i mean we'll see what happens what i want to see is obviously I want to see, you know, now that we know this, uh, Winston is funding it, I want to see, like, just the full scope of it. I think we all only see the sprinkle. Um, I want to see, there's so much I want to see. I mean, I want to see the packs. I definitely want to see them used more. I'm hoping that there's uh, more functions to the packs that we don't know about, maybe a la Ghostbusters the video game. Because it would always seem odd that in the had the Hasbro Pat uh, wands had those ghost uh those Ghostbusters the video game uh functions in it. I mean, would they just do it for the sake of an Easter egg? I don't know. It just seemed like they kind of took it a step 
a, a step really far for that. So it seems seems a little little you know. I would like to see that, but I don't think we're going to see that though. Um, what I think we'll see in this. Uh, let's start with what what do you think we'll see in this movie, Archer. Uh, I don't think you have any hero deaths in this movie. I, I think that we lost a character in the last one. Yes. So I don't think they do that here. Like, I don't think everything has to be like dark and broody as far as, you know, we're all adults now. Everything's darker type of thing. So I don't think we get a hero death in this movie Colin I no I don't I really don't know Okay fair I was al- I was almost thinking we were going to see maybe a, an old guy get killed off Well I mean Bill Murray has said that you know one of these movies he's going to get killed off obviously and i know dan Aykroyd is kind of embracing that um and speaking of speaking of that i'm a little worried because obviously there's a little bit of a rift between ray and winston slightly because like you see you see in one one trailer where like winston is holding is like offering to wand back to ray almost like was ray not physically fit Ghostbusts anymore so that's why he was kind of like you know just research boy so I mean you can interpret that any way you want Uh, I would hate to see Ray go because Dan uh, Dan Aykroyd is such a wolf of I mean his family has occult history they're occult aficionados so I mean he has such natural information and lore that he knows that could be adapted I mean, the original screenplays for Ghostbusters 1 was so much darker than what we got. So, I mean, I could see something happening. I would hope not because I want to keep them around as long as we possibly can. I mean, if we're able to turn out a Ghostbusters movie every two or three years, then let's not waste those resources. You know, let's keep them around. I mean, uh, in uh, like printed interviews I've been reading, Bill Murray actually seems very enthusiastic about this movie. And we know he's not a sequel person, really. I mean, how many right. sequels has he done in his life outside of Ghostbusters? Garfield and Zombieland, I think. I don't think I've ever seen him in another sequel. So, I mean, it's... I mean, I'm all for it. I want to see... I want to see them go as, as far as they possibly can. Uh, Nick, what do you want to see? Or what do you think we'll see? I don't know. I think, well, as you see in the trailers, you see the firehouse pretty much get ripped apart. So I'm pretty sure we're gonna we might see the end of the firehouse. And I know it's been blown up in the real Ghostbusters, blown up in the first movie, but I think they might retire it as the official headquarters and maybe wherever winston's got his engineer corps that might become the new headquarters okay i could see that yeah i mean i could see that but i think that's very dangerous too i was, I, I was literally about to say the word dangerous i was like oh i feel like that's dangerous because i mean do you were i mean i think winston was that's smart the last, that's the last jedi move <laughs> yeah I mean, do you do you want to keep all your eggs in one basket? I mean, Winston obviously kept the research off site and unbeknownst to to the others for good reasoning. You know, if a big bad is following them or a big bad escapes from the main containment unit, they have that place as a secondary containment unit. You know, that's a fallback. You know, it's it's a last resort, it's a backup base, so to speak. That's the way, uh, at least the way I look at it. Um, I want to say, even if they destroy the firehouse again, I mean, with Winston's money, you can't tell me he he couldn't build it back up and, you know, 
But I mean, mm. what is what is their focus? Is their focus getting new fans, or is it keeping us? Because if it's if their focus is just getting new fans, I don't think they would care about the firehouse or any, you know, even the even the Ecto. Well, I'll I'll say this: the firehouse is so iconic. I mean, the firehouse is so iconic when it comes to Ghostbusters. I mean, they started. I mean, the very first movie. It was dilapidated. It had substandard wiring. It looked like a mess. The neighborhood was a demilitarized zone. I mean, it 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 was it was a bit of a shack to begin with. And you know, they bought it. They kind of cleaned it up. And then Ghostbusters too. They really cleaned it up. Fresh paint on the walls. I mean, everything looked fantastic on the inside. Um, and honestly, I I I just can't imagine a world where we don't have the firehouse in ghostbusters universe i mean that that's just me personally um not just because i mean it is a working firehouse they only use they only do exterior shots because he as everyone uh um, well i know nick knows and i know uh archer you probably know this the inside of the firehouse does not resemble what we all see in the movies that firehouse mm -hmm. Uh, technically is in uh, Los Angeles, it's in California, and it doesn't even look like that on the inside anymore. It's being completely remodeled and renovated. They built a firehouse in the studios in London where they filmed Star Wars. They actually built an actual one-to-one -one full prop firehouse, and then they just CGI'd everything, and it's amazing. So, I mean, they don't necessarily have to destroy it, but it's so iconic, and I mean, even in the cartoon, it held special uh, special meaning, you know, with the firefighters and everything that were there. And to me, it's I, I just if 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 they destroy the firehouse, it will feel like a blow to me, <laughs> to my inner child. It will feel like a blow. Uh, but hey, anything's possible. I mean, when you're talking Ghostbusters, I mean, like, yeah, the house has been blown up a few few times. Um, now, did I skip anyone by by chance? Because I lost my place here. Did everyone go? Did because I know, uh, Colin, you said. Uh, did you say what you what you think we will see? I I just said I I was thinking that we would get a death. Okay. Maybe uh, you know, the old the original guys would be would sacrifice themselves or something. That's I honestly that's what I if if I were to pick anything, that's what I would pick. Something like that. Which I don't want to happen. Don't get me wrong, but I don't want it to happen, but I think if anyone does it, it might but be if right. they're you know, if they're setting up a future a new future Ghostbusters that mm -hmm. could I mean I could see it happening. An archer. I think oh mine was um I can see them not killing somebody off. Okay. Okay. I guess. Yeah. I mean, that's the role. That's the whole. That's why I hope it happens. Nobody dies, but. It, well, I already know the last question here from Archer. <laughs> that obviously with the trailers and everything, as I know you post on Instagram, that it feels like they're spoiling it. And I get that that's, that's how movie studios work nowadays. They have to. Oh, we we we're gonna keep throwing this out in your face until, until you just get sick of it and say, "Yeah, I'll go to the movie." Wait a minute, you already damn, damn spoiled it. So I mean, you know, nowadays well, you go to a movie, you already see three quarters of it through the trailers. So I, I like I this entire like the last like I was it not the entire time, but the last twenty minutes, I have been on Fandango on a tab <laughs> going through like viewings of like different show times. Yes. Different times. I, I went from Boston to New York in the zip code and I'm like, there's not a lot of sold out. There's not, none of them are sold out. There's not a lot of like full theater kind of things. So I, in a way I understand why they're putting out so many clips, but I feel like there's gotta be a better way than, new clips yeah you know or new scenes um and shout out to countdown city geeks um uh i think he's part of the 
San Antonio Ghostbusters, I want to say, the uh, the guy who runs that. Yes. And he was like, it is up to us to make sure that this movie does well. Like, keep telling your friends to go see it. If a theater is doing a, like, hey, Ghostbusters show up, like, do that. If they're not, ask them, hey, you should, you should do this. Because I'm afraid that the opening weekend of this movie does not do well. Yeah. And I think that them showing too much of the trailers is not even helping get more eyes on it. Yeah. Um, that's my fear. That's my fear. So no, it, to answer, it's answer valid. Question, I would say I think they are showing too much. Like I've stopped watching clips. Um, I may even just stop going on Instagram for the next three days. But um, <laughs> I can understand why they're doing it based on me just looking at random theaters, random viewings on Thursday and Friday. Yeah. And right now in my theater on Thursday, there's three of us. And the the next two people only just showed up today. I've been tracking it like daily. And I'm thinking Who are you people? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, I'm thinking you. that th those two people who are going to be in my same row, they they right have next to you. They're going to be right next to you. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I was like. I was like, really, same row, even. They, I talk uh, about this all the time, dude. Like, there'll be like, I'll go, I'll get, I'll buy my seats for a movie like first. There'll be nobody in there. I'm sitting there, like, I get there early. Four people walk in and they sit right either in front of you behind you or next to you it's like you had a whole theater to pick from yeah. Yeah. and you sat yeah. right next to me yeah it happens uh, every time every fucking time. every time every, every time. time i'm kind of hoping that they are also ghostbuster fans because those two people they have two seats in my same row but there's two seats in between the two of them and i'm like they oh are those pack. proton pack seats yeah. I know, I know people personally, not not locally, but I know uh, Ghostbuster fans who've actually bought extra tickets so they can put their packs in a seat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I am wearing my uniform, but I am not doing that. No. I am not bringing a proton pack with me because some, you know, knowing my luck, some kid or some goofball is gonna like touch it and break something on it. I'm like, no, no thanks. I mean, if I'm doing an event with my team and we're at the theaters, then yeah, sure, we're we're gonna have our, our equipment with us, but we're not gonna like you know, sit it in a seat right next to us. I mean, that's just what if you accidentally, accidentally spill your beverage on it and then you short all the wiring? Yeah. Well, I great. thought yeah. if it actually like just blows up, that'd be a problem. Yeah. But I mean, uh, as far as like that goes, I mean I think a big issue is the pandemic. Yes, I use that word. Uh, mostly because let's let's be honest, people are are lazy now. Because we know in a month, in a month and a half to two months, oh, this is gonna be on digital. I can just watch it at home. I'll pay 20 bucks for it instead of paying like 22 for our tickets plus the what the food is gonna cost. And then I can watch it as many times digitally as I want. And also, I think like, oh, hey, well, hey, if you go to AMC, you go to Regal, oh, you, you can buy a Ghost Trap popcorn bucket. It's only going to cost you 50 bucks. Because it seems like the souvenir popcorn buckets or cups are costing even more and more nowadays. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could see that, but I think the, the positive thing, the positive angle I want to look at is this. One, I think a lot of families enjoyed Afterlife. And they can see, oh, yeah, the kids are still involved. That I think that might still draw families. Um, also, we got Easter coming up. You know, people, families who are like maybe traveling, they want to do something fun during the day while, you know, your, your aunts are cooking. Maybe they take them out to the movies that weekend, you know. I'm hoping that maybe that kind of a thing happens. But, I mean, those are a lot of what ifs. Those are a lot of what ifs right there. But yeah, I am hoping for the best. I do know that this movie is hitting drive-ins this this coming weekend. And those people who are in the western New York area, you can go ahead and check out the transit drive-in. 
out in Lockport, where the Buffalo Ghostbusters will be appearing. So come say hi to us. Famous plug. Uh, but I mean, yeah, I mean, movie. Let's be honest, movie theaters are not doing as well as they used to before the pandemic. Not at all. I mean, would you like to get dressed up? Go spend, you know, 40 bucks just to get in and maybe a popcorn and a soda right there for you and, and, and your 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 significant other? Or would you rather, hey, I can stay in my shorts and t-shirt and we can watch it on digital in two months? I mean, there is that argument, sadly. That's why they should make it rentable to home opening day. Yes. I mean, if they do that, they're, they're still making money. They're not making as much through the theaters. Obviously. They do it with some movies. There's some movies you can, the, you know, they make available rental right away. Mm -hmm. Colin, we know, you're stream, you, we know you're streaming the Taylor Swift concert. Come on, be honest. You can tell oh, us. yeah, definitely. You know, He's a big Tay Tay fan. Can't talk shit about it if you don't watch it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, facts. So, Colin, <laughs> do you think do you think trailers have spoiled too much? I hope not. I mean, I'm not gonna. We're not gonna know until we see it. I don't. I I think. Do, do you? When the new Ninja Turtle movie came out, they were doing like experiences and like they were having all these events. Companies were sending content creators and shit. All these like. Ninja Turtle, like I, these movies, they need to start doing stuff like that, like to promote these movies. Don't hate me, I haven't seen the, the Ninja Turtle movie yet. yet. I, I well, haven't found. Yeah, I mean, you don't the, have to see it. I'm just like, remember when it was coming same. out? Like every day, somebody, some content creators were showing off these boxes of stuff they were getting. They were doing. They had like these, like, uh, ex, like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle experience places set up, like. I, they were just doing tons of stuff to promote it. All, all these movies should be doing stuff like that. What is that? Oh, yeah. I know. I got a buddy grabbing I, I, I have people in Ohio. What can I say? Hmm. I know. I have, a, I have a buddy in Colorado that's picking up all those from me, for me. But I am tooling with the idea of that possibly being part of a giveaway for my uh, cancer stream later, I, later I, this spring. So. I actually want to jump on what EC was saying just now. I, I think an issue is the people that they're you know embracing, if you would, mm -hmm. aren't tied <clears throat> to the fan base. So like I was watching that video. We also had a video that came out. The pictures dropped first, but then eventually the videos came out where you had a couple influencers go to London and they were on set. Yes. That was the first time we saw the pack, like high def, with the hazard logos, with the thong, um, with the slime blower behind them. And I was like, oh, that's, you know, again, great images, great vlogs by those people. But when I watched those videos, none of them were like in the nerd space per se. Like they were gamers, some of them were gamers. But they weren't in like the nerd media space. And I feel like that's where the miss happens. Like some people, this is not a knock on anybody. Some people got invited to New York that they're they're popular in the Ghostbuster space, but like don't put out content on a regular basis. Or they were popular in the gaming space, but like that gaming space doesn't necessarily like tie into the Ghostbuster space. Like, I don't know what the right answer would be necessarily because Ghostbusters is very niche, but I feel like at times the wrong kind of influencers are invited to some of these things. And there isn't a good mix of like hardcore, hardcore that are consistent and casual people that are there. I, and I, th I think that's very uh, that's you're hitting the nail on the head right there. Yeah, well, and and I think something that should be studied. And if I was Sony, I'd find out who these people were, and I would poach the living shit out of them. Sorry for cursing, but whoever was part of the Barbie marketing, <laughs> the fact that they were able to tie Barbie and Oppenheimer into the Barbie Barbieheimer whatever shit, that's why those movies did so well. 
Yeah. Like, I think ones, I think that was like a that just naturally happened. Was like, it was like a once in a lifetime, like you know, like you know, it's it just wild. everything came together perfectly. Wild. And, yeah, yeah. I would have I would have somehow looked at that. Be like, how did they do that shit? To see, like, how do we figure out a way to like get casuals into this, but also embrace the hardcore, like that. I think you got to have a little bit of both. I mean, you got to have some hardcore, yeah. but you got to have people that aren't tied to the Ghostbuster community yeah. that are tied to the nerd community. You know, like yeah. you got to reach everybody. Yeah, but I don't think clips is the answer. I, I don't. Yeah. I don't think just adding more, <clears throat> more and more clips. Uh, again, going back to that point, I don't know if that's necessarily the answer, but yeah, I don't know. Well, like adding clips to anything, you have the trailers, and they all pretty much had the same clips in it, except the international trailer, and then there was that Japanese trailer that had a couple interesting clips that were you know, not seen in any American or the international trailer. So, <clears throat> but I don't so much think as it's spoiling it because you're not really, not all of them. Some of them you do, but not all of them. You don't get context. Facts. It's just like, Oh yeah. look, there's a tricycle. Oh no. What the hell is a tricycle doing? Yeah. yeah and I get it. <laughs> it obviously it's going to have something to do with, you know, everything freezing over and all that, but there's no context. So just throwing up images, to me, I don't feel it's going to spoil anything. Obviously, you get the sewer dragon. You know, okay, a new ghost, kind of spoiled a little bit. Garaka, new ghost, okay, kind of spoiled a little bit. They could have left that completely out. They could have just made it to where the firehouse doors blow off and yeah. you don't see shit. But then you got to add a little bit to it to draw people in. Okay, here you go. Based on Ghostbusters Afterlife and based on trailers, will this be a hit? Archer. All right, I'm going to go to the numbers because I'm, I'm all about numbers. Um, Those Afterlife... that don't know, Archer does the math on everything. He does the research. <laughs> I, I try my best. And we love you for that. So Afterlife opened at $44 million, mm -hmm. And Answer the call, aka 2016, opened at 46. Both of those are higher than the original two. Um, Afterlife did better domestic domestically than um, Answer the Call, did worse internationally, and did worse box office wise than Answer the Call. I think that. Um, Based on trailers, um, we're, I'm just doing the first bullet point, right? Yes. Okay. Um, based on trailers, I don't think it grabs any new people, but I think because Afterlife was so loved, um, I think more people will by default show up that probably skipped 2016. So I think in the best case scenario, this movie does the same as afterlife uh I'm sorry best case scenario it beats afterlife but truly i think a best case scenario uh 45 million opening domestic is uh okay would be good and i don't think it has anything to do with the trailers to be honest now i want to say based on what afterlife did i th i want to say I mean, the pandemic. I think definitely think had a had a bearing on it, but in in a good and a bad way, because people were slowly getting back into going to going to theaters, going to see movies, you know, in a traditional experience. However, in a good positive way, even Jason Reitman said that because of the pandemic, because of the delays, he got to go back and re-edit things and do a different cuts. Well, the, what, so. This this might be the uh, Hudson whiskey, but I will say this: <laughs> I actually did not think about this until literally this conversation about 
three minutes ago. I technically was part of the casual fan basis when Afterlife came out. Like I was not cosplaying, watching any of that stuff. Um, You're welcome. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I, I, I think that there's still, I still don't think trailers do enough to, to get a casual in to going back to the theater. Now, Movies like Dune, uh, Top Gun, Godzilla minus one, maybe those would like entice somebody on the fence. But I think a straight up casual Ghostbuster person, I don't think the trailers are, are pushing them over the edge, personally. But I'm I really hope I'm wrong on this one. Okay. Um, Colin, I I think it does good. I just I don't I can't see like to me like this is a movie that you go to the movie theater to see. You know I I don't know I I think it does good. Nick, I think it's gonna do some good. Um, I mean, but like compared to trailers back in the day, you know, trailers back when you know we were younger. They're not as gripping. Like, you don't have that voiceover. You don't have that, you know, this summer, you know, things like that. You don't have any kind In of... In a world like where New York City is frozen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, yes. You don't have I was going to try to mock that, but you did it for me. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it doesn't... It, it could affect it, but I don't think it's going to. But again, trailers just aren't what they used to be. So people are probably going to want to go to the theaters and see exactly what they're hoping for. Yeah. I mean, I'm hopeful. Uh, given, I mean, I, of course, me and Nick are probably a little bit more biased because uh, of how friggin' obsessed we are. Uh, <laughs> Archer's on his way. How many packs are you at right now? Three? See? Well, you know, any Ghostbuster team needs at least four packs, so you, you know you got to get get another one at some point. Who knows? Maybe there's going to be an eighty-four pack. Can I? Uh, actually, I want to ask a question. Uh, Nick, do you have any children? I do not. You don't. So EC, you're the only one here that has kids. Unless Dave, do you have kids, and I I don't know about them. Well, if you count my cats, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if that's the metric, then I no. have I have kids too. Um, but I feel like, so, and the only reason I bring this up is shameless plug nerdy coffee every Monday morning, 9am on nerd affiliated. Um, a movie that has done well for the last three weeks is Kung Fu Panda. Did not see that coming at all. And was, was this like the fourth or something? It's the fourth. Yeah. yeah it's the fourth one. And I feel like the reason Kung Fu Panda 4 is doing well is, and EC, you can let me know, when your kids have time off from school, eventually you start to run out of things to do because you're just like, they're, they're, they got all this energy, they, they want to do this, they want to do that. You can go only go to the zoo so many times. But the theater, I think, is, in, is one of those things you can do with your kids when it's just like, all right, school's out. Uh, or I've already exhausted other shit I want to do. I got to take them to go do something else outside of the house. So I feel like a saving grace could be that parents see when they go to the theater, like, hey, we're just going to go. We're like, let's just go to the theater. It's raining outside. I can't just take them to the park and let them run around. A saving grace could be we go to the theater. We look at the, the roster on the list. And see what could be a family friendly movie. And they choose Ghostbusters because they've already seen Kung Fu Panda three times. Or there's no other minions as I don't think there's any other family films out right now, actually, as I think about it. So I, I think those could be some easy layup. I'm looking at it right now. Well, and that that goes yeah. back kind of like what I was saying before is like, dude, the Ghostbusters, they got Slimer, they got the little yeah. You know, Post. they could be marketing that shit like stuff to kids, 
Yeah. And they really didn't do any of that with no. these to with toys. They put out some toys, but like, they, yeah. they just, I mean, they just showed up one day. You know, they didn't, there's nothing like saying, um, hey, come you, buy me. Say shit. It's okay. <laughs> no, I've been, on, I've been on this thing where I'm, I try really hard not to swear. I'm like on my content or nothing now. So, okay. but, um, I mean, like Elias obviously knows about Ghostbusters. He wants to see it, but I mean, a lot of that might have to do with me. I don't know. I mean, but like, like I was saying, like they, they need to market better. Or I don't know. Yeah. Well, right now, like right now I pulled up movies and theaters on Fandango and I've got Kung Fu Panda four. And as I continue to scroll, the next kids movie on this list is migration. So if a parent has taken their kids to the theaters more than once, they've probably seen both those movies. So well, my migration's already out on blu ray digital. Yeah. 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 So like uh, you're, you're you show up and you're just like shit. I got what am I gonna oh Ghostbusters? I most likely it's safe. And then they take the kids into that. So I, I think that might help, but yeah, I, I think influencing on the family ish side should have been more heavily thought of um outside of just like traditional hardcore ghostbuster mm -hmm. places or the random gaming ones yeah i mean i agree that uh, like colin was saying about like where's where's the i mean we haven't had any promotions have we not outside like, of trailers, no. I mean, like, oh, there's going to be uh, an icy flavor for Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Um, you know, at the end of this month, March 30th, I think, they're supposed to be, Hasbro's supposed to be announcing some kind of uh, Ghostbusters item. We don't know what kind of a line it's going to be. It could be more of the small kitty stuff. Um, I mean, I'll be surprised as hell if they do a, a Plasma series. Well, like I, you know, I haven't thought about this in a while. But like, I, growing up, like every movie that came out, like McDonald's had a toy line for, like you know, yep. like do they? I mean, I know, like I, I don't go to McDonald's very often, if like barely at all anymore. But like, I know they do Pokemon cards and stuff. But do they do stuff for the movies anymore? Like, I don't know. Really. So. Yeah, like I, yeah, like I couldn't say because I don't go. That's an that would be an odd like ever. that. That's got to be that had to have done a lot of good for us i mean that's what drew us into a lot of stuff like oh i want i want all the mcdonald's toys now you know like Transformers, power rangers all that it's stuff, yeah. it's really yeah. not that hard i don't no, no it's not um as far as like will it be hit i'm hoping for the best that's kind of where i'm standing now regardless of the ending where would you like the franchise to go next cartoon limited run series on netflix what would be another media you would like to see? I mean, obviously, they have Spirits Unleashed from Ilphonic Games, and it's it's been thriving. They've been rolling out updates, and, you know, I want to, you can't even call it a, like, it's not like a paid DLC. I mean, if you have if you have the game and you complete certain, uh, or you get to a certain level, they're rolling out different cosmetics. You can have a cardboard proton pack, you can have the extreme Ghostbusters if you do certain missions, and they're rolling out more of the monsters. They gave us Sam Hain uh, a couple months back. I mean, they're rolling out a lot of different skins. They're very productive. Uh, and obviously, they got Dan Aykroyd and Ernie Hudson involved with voicing over. In the storyline, they had alluded to the Spangler kids coming for a visit. So hopefully, we'll get like Trevor McKenna, maybe podcast. Uh, Logan Kim will get some of them to do some voices. I mean, they have that game. That game is is good and all. However, it doesn't grab everyone. It's grabbing the older fans, the, the gamer fans, but it doesn't attract everybody. Hey, and um, speaking speaking of like a game, they should have did Fortnite skins, like uh, two years they, ago. Yeah, well, not for the new movie. That I mean, no, that should no, be. A, no. They should have. They, no, they should have promoted for the have, new movie. They percent. have. Thousands. They have generic Fortnite skins that don't look like anybody affiliated with Ghostbusters other than having the jumpsuit uh, proton pack, or you can wear a ghost trap on your back. You have a proton axe, and you have the Ecto-1 as a glider. 
but it wasn't it wasn't I debuted mean, as new no. con- new content. No, no, no. It's it's just off the classic stuff. I mean, that's something they could easily do. I mean, hell, there's that would draw uh, kids into it right there. I mean, we just we just came up with three easy ass ways to draw kids into hell, a movie. Disney is supposed to be doing Fortnite skins soon. I mean it I mean it's an easy thing. They they can do the skins and bam, do it. I mean, there's I think a cartoon. Like you could do like a limited run cartoon on Netflix. Like do half a season just to just to get feelers out there to see how well it's gonna be received. You know? There's a lot of stuff they could do. There's a lot of stuff they could do, and it, it feels like they're missing the mark. I mean, me and a lot of people I know play Ghostbusters Spirits Unleashed, but you know what? To me, I still get a little bit more enjoyment out of playing Ghostbusters the video game remastered. A game from the early 2000s, I still get a little bit more enjoyment, you know, going through the storyline because with Spirits Unleashed, you're just it's kind of like if you ever played a uh, oh, what's what's the one? Uh, not Left for Dead, but I'm thinking what's the other one? Uh, that's is it seven days to die or i'm trying to think it's like one of those games where you have like four people who are good guys who are trying to survive and one person who's the killer it's kind of that mashup i was thinking of the jason video game (laughs) huh i was thinking of the jason video game where somebody randomly spawns as jason yeah or like praying grounds or you know it's it's that kind of a concept but with a different skin over it and you know that's the thing you get a little sprinkle of storyline just a little bit but most of it is you and your crew going on different haunts or you go and you're the ghost and you're trying to, you know, outlast the Ghostbusters who are hunting you down. That's pretty much the game in a nutshell, in a way. I mean, well, what I, drives I, people is getting those skins. I would get those DLCs. My answer for, for that bullet point would be I would go with a TV show on Netflix, like a, a limited run TV show that's like nothing to do with New York City, the firehouse, that kind of thing. Because Stranger Things has already proven you can do a kitty type show that like is darker. So I would I would go with a Netflix ish type of show. Eight episodes, they're out doing random adventures, add more comedy than Netflix or, or more comedy than uh, Stranger Things and see see what it does. Have them reference New York. Like, you know, maybe Winston calls them or something. Uh, but otherwise, I, I would... Next <clears throat> one I would do is, is is a show not in New York City, somewhere else. Uh, different major city, maybe. Chicago. Chicago, Chicago needs it. Yep, yeah, needs a thing. And say uh, Buffalo? Yeah. <laughs> Go from there. Milwaukee. See, I, I, like, I like that <laughs> idea. I do, because, you know... Uh, Dan Aykroyd had thought about doing a show where it was them in their, you know, early teens or met. late teens, early twenties, where they first meet. Yep. So doing something like that, because you know, when in the first movie it goes, you know, the franchise right to make us rich beyond our wildest dreams. Exactly. They can go to each city, and they can meet with different franchises, Chicago. Because you had the Ghost Smashers who eventually gets evolved or dissolved into the Ghostbusters. And then they go out to go to Oklahoma. Maybe somebody out there created a franchise in Somerville. Maybe in Wyoming. Who the hell knows? You know, some some of the off the wall places where you don't think anything like that's gonna happen and they have their own franchises. So I think that would be an interesting concept. And even Ernie Hudson this week in his interviews. Uh, if you've not watched the one with him on the Breakfast Club, you guys should. He mentions that it'd be cool if they go into another realm of the spooky stuff. And I think this is really aligned with real Ghostbusters. I've not watched all of it, but like where it's not just a generic big bad guns. Like there could yeah. be other things, vampires, werewolves that the Ghostbusters have to deal with. But those are your satellite Ghostbuster things. That that's our our introduction. Like you said, they're in Chicago, they're in uh, Milwaukee, they're in these other towns 
that even John Candy, Dan Aykroyd, Bill Murray, they all, they were all Midwest. Like that's where that all that shit was coming from. So like maybe you're out there and they're dealing with other types of ghouls that aren't just the traditional, what we've seen in Ghostbusters 1 and 2. Ghostbusters International, you got the vampire division, the, yep. the, the werewolf division, like you said. Uh, I mean, there's a yeah, there's I mean, it's basically make okay supernatural but incorporated with Ghostbusters. That would be cool, actually. I like that idea. I mean, people have cosplay plenty of uh supernatural proton packs. Mm -hmm. And I do like you know the fact that because I, I, I think it's what is it, West Virginia has the cryptoid division, I think it's West Virginia. I have the patch on my shirt. It's the... Uh, of course you do. Yeah. <laughs> this one. So it's got Bigfoot's, you know, Bigfoot's foot. And they can incorporate that into looking for Sasquatch. Right. Or maybe Sasquatch isn't a monkey. Maybe it's a demon. You know, something along those lines. So you definitely could bring out the whole... A different thing because they dealt with a yeah. banshee in international so they're, they're, the spectrum is just it's wide yeah i mean they could definitely do they could do it where there's a big bad and the big bad is organizing all these smaller attacks with various ghosts and minions you know and the ghostbusters aren't even aware of who the big bad could be could be a human could be a human in league with a ghost. Could be a demon in league with ghosts. Could be anything. Yeah, it was like back Definitely in the day. Opens the door. I say like early 2000, I think it was early 2000s, maybe 2002-ish. 88 Miles Per Hour came out with a comic run. Yes. Where it was the original guys, and then their college buddy ends up getting in league with the ghost and attacking the Ghostbusters because all they did back in the day was make fun of them. So they attacked the Ghostbusters, and he had some sort of... I don't remember, because I haven't read it in so long. But well, I mean, it, real Ghostbusters took on Sam Hain. He wasn't exactly a ghost. He was just a supernatural yeah. entity. The Boogeyman. I mean, there, there's definitely precedence with that within canon. So, yeah, that can definitely be done. And I think that would be awesome. Yeah. You know? uh, and anyone who might be watching this, there's uh, some... You can find these fan fanfic or fan uh, films... There's the return of the Ghostbusters. There's also Ghostbusters mm -hmm. versus Freddy Krueger. Yep. Um, there, there's a whole host of of these fan films, and they show, uh, you know, Egon's nephew. Um, uh, I think, I think, yeah, it was it was his nephew, blonde haired nephew, who sets up shop in like Seattle or something, wasn't it? I think it was. I don't Seattle, remember. Washington, or something. But, I mean. Yeah, it would be great to see see that kind of try uh like that kind of tie-in. What based on the trailers and what product collectible tie-ins would you like to see? Like are is there do you want to see more action figures? Do you see do you want to see more props? I definitely think more props would definitely be something worthwhile, honestly. Cuz Ghostbusting World, I mean the playing board is unlimited. I mean, you can come like you see. You know, we had the the remote control trap. Now we have the drone trap. You know, the proton now, pack. Can, can yeah, I have this in, in live action? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, there's so much. There's so much you can do. And even though I wasn't a huge fan of the 2016 movie, the uh, I enjoyed their packs. Uh, the pro the proton packs were cool, and the uh, the proton pistols that came out of came out of Kate McKinnon's. Oh, yeah, those were bad. I love those. So I mean, Hol Holtzman was badass. I'm sorry, she was the well, highlight. Holtzman in general, I thought she was the only saving grace of the movie, but that's besides the point. <laughs> but like that, yeah, the, the proton pistols that come out that reminded me of Kylie's yep, proton from gun Extreme. from Extreme Ghostbusters. Yep. So it was just the yeah the props would definitely be something. I love that Janine get, gets her little uh, uh, proton gauntlets. Yep, yep. 
and I'm shocked at how fast Scalari Brothers and everyone else, everyone else is coming out with their own, with their own variation of it. I've talked to people and a lot of people I've spoken to are like, you know what? It looks really cool. I want to get it. I'm like, yeah, but you know what? FOMO, there might be more. You might there might be more details that come out after the movie when you see the. Movie. Oh, for sure. There might be more stuff. So maybe hold off on it. I know a friend of mine. I was like, yeah, this looks really cool, and he was like, you know what? I would hold off on it just for now. There's going to be revisions, and you don't know there oh, yeah. might be extra things that come out that we don't even know about yet. So, yeah, because you know it's it's cool they bring in the uh, the proton gauntlet too because in one of the comic runs I don't remember if it was international or if it was one on one I don't remember which one it was. Mm-hmm. Winston goes out and he is on vacation, and he brings he brings a a wrist pack with him. And his wife gets all pissed off at him because they're supposed to be on a family vacation. And the hotel they're at is like, hey, do you mind doing this for us? And he's like, sure. And he, he has the wrist pack. So well, I'm surprised he, nobody came out with it then. And that was a couple years ago. Well, he, he's basically Iron Man now being rich as hell. So why not? Basically, yeah. Yeah, he is the Tony Stark of the Ghostbusters. So what we're going to, I know we're running a little late here, so we're going to wrap it up. Are you guys suiting up for the movie? If so, are you going khaki, GB2 gray, or engineer core black? Well, I know we will be at the CMX theaters, us Daytona Beach Ghostbusters at Daytona 1. Um, I will be in khaki because my black one, which was my first flight suit I ever got, because, you know, being a bigger guy, I couldn't find a khaki flight suit, so the black one was the best way to go. It's not prepared yet to be uh, engineer core, so I will be going khaki. Okay, Colin. Um, if I were, if I do, it's gonna be the one I'm wearing. Um, okay. but it's not, it's not really ready yet, so I don't know if I'd really want to wear it out. Well, you got your name tag on here. Do you, do yeah. you have a pack on? I didn't put my patches on yet. Okay. Which I, I mean, could, yeah. I mean, I have time to do. I could, but I mean, honestly, the, there's cheap ways you can. Like, I mean, one of my first suits I did was for my Back to the Future pack. Was I actually had Velcro strips on the side so I could just take the patch off and put a different patch on. I mean, you could do something simple like that just for now, right? Uh, you know, I mean, the, there's simple things you do, or even just kind of pin it on there somehow if you really want i mean i mean it's 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 up to you it's up to you what you want to do you know right uh and technically speaking you're you have a navy suit right yep technically that's gb2 because that's how a lot of people would make the gb2 suits would be to wash them and use stain or use a dye remover over and over and over again to try and remove it uh, i know one person who did that method but wound up with a thanos suit it was like a dark <laughs> like a darkish purple so, no nice. I mean, you gotta be careful with that but no you're, you're you're good with you're good with the navy man and uh archer um i'm still on the fence i'm i <clears throat> doesn't that hurt yeah i might i might put the proton pack in the truck still <clears throat> in case um but i think if I do it, it, well, for sure, it's going to be the khaki. Okay. I've not worn the khaki out yet. I've only won the GB2. So uh, I built the full-size pack, and I made this suit to go to Premiere. Did not get the tickets to the Premiere. So I think for, for this, if I'm wearing so, a suit. So gonna... three tickets, one for you, one for the wife, one for the pack? She's going on a different day. I'm going while oh, she's actually still okay. at work. Because I'm like, so, I need to see it so I can avoid spoilers and have to edit any reviews and talk about it whenever I need to. Is she holding you under embargo so you can't talk about the movie to her? Um, I don't think she would care as much, but okay. Um, I won't tell her about it in passing unless she asks me for it. So, so you're not going to come home and be like, oh my god. You no, I am. This. Like, you guys are going to see it on Thursday night, 8.15 p.m. Yeah, uh, me, me and Mrs. Dimension are going 7.30 p.m. that that day. We get out of work around 4.30-ish, so we'll probably go grab some food and find somewhere where I can change into my uniform 
Oh yeah, I'll be ready in the theater. My showing's at two two ish, two thirty on Thursday. My problem was again, like me and Nick are really really big guys, you know. Um, I found a Rothko suit, but I had to keep going up and up a size because they are very uh, trim, very mm-hmm. form fitting in certain parts. Like my arms and Colin, legs. Colin and I are in the same boat on that part. Yeah, so in the midsection and the lower yep. n- nether regions, yep, uh, really snug. So I, what I would normally wear would be like a four or five X. I had to go up to their seven X. Yeah, which is mine. The black, suit, the black suit that I got initially, I'm I wore a three at the time. I wore a two X. Yeah. So I got a four X just for extra room, and the flight suit that I got, it definitely was a little tight and that was two sizes bigger than what I was wearing at the time. Now I wear a three X and the four X is getting a little snug. Well, with me, I do plan on at a later date and time. I'm my first gray suit, which I still have. It's a very durable suit, but it's not thin. It's a heavier suit, which is great for cold weather. Not so great for some cold warm weather. I plan to go through that company again to get a suit, uh, but in black. But my problem is they've gone up in price just a little bit. So it'd be like another 70, 80 bucks. So like like three hundred dollar suits. Opposed to like a two fifty. So yeah. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, if you want something, you know, you, you kind of have to go for it. But like this, this will do me right now. Um, uh, I have a khaki, like actual like it like mechanic coveralls from Lapco. That it's it's a little bit it's more breathable it's much more comfortable because it's got elastic at the waist not like the velcro strips but like an actual uh elastic waist so it's a little bit more comfortable a little bit more breathable breathable so yeah well don't supposed to for big guys <laughs> <laughs> yeah i well just to uh and i apologize i had to step away for a second and use the bathroom but that bullet point number three Oh, okay. somebody brought it up on my show this week where they were like, oh, like uniforms would be cool, like some RGB uniforms. And uh, I, I think in general, I'd like some more real Ghostbuster love. I'm all for a Hasbro 84 pack. That's just like black, no afterlife mods to it. Yeah. All for it. But if they want to do something different, I would be down for some real Ghostbuster wands packs. I just I just say F it, go for the pack. You know, home run hit it. Uh, if they made that thing four hundred bucks, including the wand, I feel like, or actually, sorry, I'm getting I'm getting to uh, marketing here. No, I, mean, I think I, I, think, they, I think you're kind of right on with the pricing. I think if Hasbro did a real Ghostbusters. Proton pack with a wand. It's a new mold, but it's simpler than a Ghostbuster one. Uh, four fifty, I think, would do very well for wands. I maybe I like your idea though, but four maybe do it like four seventy five. Because mm-hmm. remember, in the real Ghostbusters, they could also attach the trap to the pack. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so they, I mean, the well, too. you got a pack. Yeah, if you had a trap to that. You can 500 that trap pack I mean, and wand. You, you yeah. can still, well, I yeah. mean, even if you don't do the trap with, if you don't bundle it there, you could do another two in a box RGB version. If you want to milk the, it, yeah. you want to milk it? PKE. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, you know PKE that's the route that would go. Yeah. I mean, the PKE from uh, Real Ghostbusters, I mean, you have the part that kind of extends outwards and then you have the, the antennas that yeah, actually yeah. fully move up yeah. and down. Yeah. So, I mean, you would have you would probably spend a little bit more money on the electronics right there. And, well, the I problem mean, is the problem is that I was telling Anthony a long time ago when we were talking about this is real Ghostbusters is really niche if we're if yes. we're gonna really like break it down and they would have to figure out all right how many people actually would cosplay as real Ghostbusters like that's that's kind of the angle you have to take it and they'd have to understand yeah. they're gonna sell less than the afterlife pack. Oh yes, so. Or maybe you sell more. You know, maybe there are, like myself, newer fans that come in. It's a gamble. Uh, but I, I think 
I think they would have to, in their worst case scenario, price it at the exact same price as the um the afterlife, but somehow give you extras. It can't just be a proton pack. Yeah, yeah. I would like to see a pack that is um I guess what's what's the right word I'm looking for? Maybe modular in a way where you can sw- swap out different components. Depending on what what movie you want the pack to be. Do you want it to be Ghostbusters 1? Do you want it to be Ghostbusters 2? Because we had different ribbon cables. There were some differences. Mm-hmm. The crank knob was a little different. You know, you could have a different ion arm on on your pack. There's like little things that could be changed. And also, well, I mean, look how... Own, they should make their own shell. I mean, that's what I've, I've talked about for a while, yeah. too. It was like 250 bucks blank shell. We could all get them on yeah. on Etsy right now, but we can't get a, a, a hack factory. Yeah, shell. two fifty shell, no cables. I would say throw in the electronics, but um, two fifty no paint is just gray. And then electronics could even be optional. You know, they could have a a build your proton pack. Yeah, build a pack. It'd be better build than build a figure. Cool. Yeah. Or even do like a, a like you know, Archer was saying a, a base pack, do like an 84 pack, mm-hmm. but then give us three different ion arms, give us an afterlife, yeah, give us a frozen empire, yeah, and they could just pop off or clip off and yeah. clip back on, yeah. And you could even go ahead and take and mix, mix match it, you can do an yeah. 84 and afterlife, or well, 89 yeah. and a frozen empire, well, yeah. That's kind of like with uh. On uh, Ghostbusters uh, Spirits Unleashed, the game, you can swap out certain components for your pack. Yeah. 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 So leave out the strap. That, that would be cool. Give me the straps. No straps, no motherboard. Just give me. And well, like, then we'll in our, out. I agree that, I mean, an RGB pack would be awesome. I know someone who has one, it was 3D printed. Looks friggin' amazing. However, you know, you, you with it being 3D printed, you have concerns like, temperature and oh if i knock into something oh it's gonna crack and you know so you have concerns about that but yeah it's definitely very niche because you're only gonna have people who are either they're they introduce their kids or grandkids to the cartoon who would even know about it yeah so i don't even honestly i think it would be a failure to be perfectly honest unless you open up the quantity of how many you can buy because then people might actually buy you know six seven eight potentially speaking because maybe they want their card to have nothing but rgb packs in the back or maybe you want some kind of a setup for if you're a franchise and you know you're doing events at cons uh i mean there's a lot of stuff they could do but i think like offering different uh different pack components would be cool i mean hell you can go on etsy you can get ion arms that can snap onto you that can connect onto your existing ion arm right now for HasLab. They have those. Uh, for my my pack, the handles I got, because I have my Spengler one on there, but I have the Frozen Empire 3D printed handles on there right now. I mean, there's a lot of stuff you, you can get on Etsy, but, you know, I'll be honest, the quality of the pack from Hasbro is just mind-boggling. It's mind-boggling how great it is. Uh, could have been a little, little bit darker, sure. But, you know, there's a lot of people who are making aftermarket mods. I would love to see them do more HasLab. Because I really think that they found, they kind of struck gold. Because they're like, okay, let's do a Spangler wand. And then because they did the wand, they made us think like, oh, they have to be coming out with a pack. They have to be coming out with a pack. I mean, I know I know, me and Nick, Nick were, were thinking like, oh, well, why would they do a wand with a hose that could connect? I mean, why would they just tease us like that? Because Mattel did a wand years ago. They did a wand, a pack, or sorry, a wand, a ghost trap, PKE, and goggles. And they could mm-hmm. actually interact with each other. You could actually do a cross the stream feature with two Maddie collector wands. You know, um, but they never did a pack. They kind of just like, it kind of gave up our, or I don't know if it was a rights issue or whatever. But Hasbro, I mean, they gave us the pack. They gave us the straps. The straps were okay, but you know they also made it so like, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna design this pack where you can mod it, 
we're putting a dummy switch underneath the gearbox. So if you want to put your own switch there, you want to wire something else in there, like a smoke kit or something, you can do that. They made it in mind, like all the grommets that we can pull off of it. Like if you're a cosplayer and you're traveling, you can pull all the hoses and everything, all the little grommets off the pack, put it like in a Ziploc bag and put it in your suitcase or something so it's not going to fall off. Nick knows what I'm talking about. Last year at the, at the firehouse, he had parts that were coming off his pack. Yeah. So and that wasn't it, even my that wasn't even my ha- I didn't even have a Hasbro pack. That was my Ben nope. of Kent pack that I won. Yep. And the damn so, I mean, Spangler wand, I would just move because I had it with just a piece of metal yep. bent so it would slide on. And every time I moved and if some woman knocked it off, I almost lost it under the subway. Oh, I was not yep. a happy camper in June. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing I had my tools with me that day too. True, <laughs> but I mean, I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff they they could do. I want to see them do more because I think they they showed the not just the Ghostbuster fan base, but I think they showed collectors in general. Like, hey, yeah, we've been doing lightsabers for like two fifty, two seventy. Hey, we're we're we did a proton pack. Take a look at it, and people still buying. People are still hunting for them. You know, how many years later now? Two or three years later. People are still hunting mm-hmm. for them on Facebook Marketplace and all the Ghostbuster groups on eBay. I mean, they were a hot commodity. So, I mean, I they could easily do an 84 pack and they know they will sell out. Oh, they oh, need yeah. to do another pack. That's for sure. I mean, I almost went for another pack when they did that weird warehouse sale where they were clearing out all their stock this past year. Yeah. I mean, that was friggin' like what you guys have more packs and you're trying to clear out the sale i mean obviously hasbro has some money issues going on but that's neither here nor there but they showed that yeah if they go with the cosplay stuff give us you know they're giving us a trap they're giving us a wand i can't wait for it i want to you know i know some people want a slime blower i don't think that's practical it would be too massive no no that'd be too big and i have i actually just acquired the parts to build a slime blower and the guy in my group actually just made one. It's a slightly smaller. He made it all out of foam. Okay. The resin EPA tanks foam? that I have, the resin tanks that I have are ridiculous. They are uh-huh. massive. Uh-huh. And there's a guy in Virginia, uh, Josh. He's got a full blown slime blower, and he says the thing is ridiculously heavy. Yeah. And that's the only yeah. thing I'm worried about with mine. But Hasbro doing a slime blower? Yeah, no way. Back issues. Be- you're, you're, you're definitely going to have back issues. Oh, for sure. And the slime blower for Hasbro, you're looking, I would bet you, like with the Proton Pack being 400, I would say easily 657, easily. Yeah. Slime blower. Yeah, that was, I was thinking 1,000. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, when you're factoring shipping on that thing. I don't think Hasbro could pull it off financially, but. No. I would love to see like someone like Hollywood Collectibles make or hell, what if Spirit Halloween did this? They could. The containment unit. Hollow as hell. It, these make oh, hollow oh, as wall hell. mounts, like something you could wall mount a containment unit. That'd be cool. Because yeah. for one sheer fact, now that those who went in on the HasLab for the two in the box, you have a, a trap, but the trap cartridge comes right out of the, the frame. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if you want to recreate that scene, unless you're a master craft builder and you're going to build your own, I mean, I've seen Spirit Halloween do those massive, you know, animatronic statues. You, you know, do like a limited run on a containment unit to feel, you know, to test the waters like you did with the 80% scale proton pack. You know, and let's let's get a, you know, let's get like a uh, a wall mount or even something you could mount like on a portable uh display so you can move it around especially for like comic cons right nick <laughs> i mean you just need a door that slides open and you can just slide the trap in cartridge comes out close the hinge you just need you know have have the lights have the switch and have the little sound effect and there you go i don't think that would perfect. be that that hard of an issue you know But I want to thank everyone for coming on. We I was planning to go two hours. Apparently, we went over that, <laughs> over two and a half hours. Of course, guys, please check out EC Collecting. Colin, 
anything NECA related, anything Toro related, he's got you covered on everything. Uh, Colin does, I mean, he, he does so much. Do you have anything coming up, Colin, you want to plug? I've uh, just been doing my toy hunts right now. I'm working on my toy room so I can do a uh, collection what? tour. I'm kind of reworking my channel a little bit, trying to figure okay. stuff out, but basically focused on the to keeping the toy hunts going right now because they're on a schedule. And then awesome. I have uh, Well at F and Figures podcast every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Central. That's it. You hear that, guys? So, guys, check them out tomorrow, Tuesday. What's, that would be March 19th, 2023. Or, no, it's 2023, 2024. Go ahead and check out that F and Figures podcast. You said every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Central. That will be 9 p.m. Eastern. If you're on the East Coast, so go ahead and please check out Colin, uh, good friend of the channel. Colin does. I mean, I'm not just saying that. I mean, he does some amazing work, like the uh, the lunch uh, school lunch fundraiser we did last last fall into uh, Easter or into Thanksgiving time. Um, Archer, now I'm gonna give you give it to you. Plug yo shit. <laughs> Well, Nerd Affiliated is the uh, the main hub for everything. So uh, YouTube.com slash Nerd Affiliated. That's where everything lives. But if you need that little extra Ghostbuster feel, the real Nerd Busters is our Ghostbuster fan group that we have. So check us out on Instagram. Uh, as far as upcoming videos, we have a couple Ghostbusters videos coming out. The, the original plan was one Ghostbusters video a day from yesterday until this coming friday gotta change it a little bit but uh we'll have a couple different ghostbusters videos coming out this week so nerd affiliated on youtube is where you want to find us for pretty much everything but on instagram if you want just ghostbuster stuff the real nerd busters that's the uh that's our patch right there and we have that right on screen right there as well there you go and if you guys really dig both his logos the nerd affiliated logo and the real nerd busters you can go to nerdaffiliated.com for all his merch all his merch and his latest video drops from him sal and of course rambling nerd so go ahead and please check out nerd affiliated and please you can donate to his channel you can also pick up some pretty badass merch he's got everything you can think of t-shirts sweatshirts you name it he claims it all your nerd affiliated needs right there guys you can get some stickers. There you go. You got <laughs> stickers, patches. He's got everything. Uh, Nick, they did. You know, I'm, I know something you can plug. What is that? Your team's Facebook page. Oh, absolutely. Check out Facebook.com, Daytona Beach Ghostbusters. Again, this Saturday, the 23rd, we will be at the CMX Theaters at Daytona 1. We'll be there from 10 a.m. until I'm pretty sure close. So it's going to be an all-day event. We'll be promoting the movie and just being our nerdy selves. And that's the thing, theme here, nerds. Uh, Buffalo Ghostbusters. Of course, I am a part of the Buffalo Ghostbusters, born and raised in Buffalo. Uh, we are a charity cosplay group who's been around for God, we're going on 15 years now. Uh, please check us out. If you're a local to the western new york region buffalo new york region please come out to transit drive-in this saturday night uh, where you'll find the buffalo ghostbusters in full force uh, keep in peace making sure there's nothing that goes bumping at night for the new movie ghostbusters frozen empire please take take your friends your neighbors your parole officer your baby mama take them out go see that movie it's a great movie what how do i know it's a great movie because it's a ghostbusters movie that's how i know plus Please check out the Buffalo Ghostbusters on Facebook at Buffalo G Busters. And you can also look us up on Instagram and Twitter under that same logo name. Uh, please go and support the page. Even if you've already supported us in the past, Facebook did a little bit of a purge on a lot of Ghostbuster franchises this past year, and we were one of them. So we're building our page back up. And, of course, if you like the Buffalo Ghostbusters merch, and you can only throw out the logo right there so you guys can see it in all of its awesomeness. Yeah, that's right. Buffalo Ghostbusters, that is a chicken we were holding. Uh, <laughs> you can find all of our t-shirt and merch 
through T Public, just look up Buffalo Ghostbusters. Uh, but as far as that goes, Dave's dimension. I am also partnered up with Dre the Collector Safe Space, and on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern, we've been out for a while due to well life in general, but we will be returning uh, either this week or next week to the Outer Dimensions podcast where we discuss movies, past, present, maybe even some future ones. You know, I'm, it's Dave's dimension. I time traveled, didn't you know? So please check us out, and please check out Dre the Collector Safe Space also. And other than that, guys. I want to thank Hey Archer of the Real Nerd Busters, Colin of EC Collecting, Nick Vital. He actually showed up this time of the <laughs> Daytona Ghostbusters. Day- Daytona and Buffalo are pretty much we're we're, we're cousins. We're, we're brothers. That is a long true. partnership. So I just want to thank you guys for coming out. And please, one more thing: if you are a Ghostbusters fan and you have the means to be in New York City this June. I highly recommend you do so on June 8th, 2024. That is the 40th anniversary of Ghostbusters. The first Ghostbusters movie came out June 8th, 1984, 40 years later. every That's the Saturday around that date is usually when we do uh, Buffalo Ghostbusters. We do an annual fan gathering, fan festival, if you will, where we come down to the firehouse, hook and ladder eight, down on Northmore Street, in Tribeca, and we just have an awesome fan gathering. Last year, I think we're, I think we actually broke around three or three hundred, uh, three fifty, as far as people. We actually had a wedding there last year. Mm-hmm. It was kind of insane. Um, this year, there's going to be a lot of twists and surprises, even I don't know about. But please come down. It's a free event. Uh, you, you're not allowed to park on the street because, well, it is a functional street and it is a functional firehouse. But it's always a great time for kids, parents, families all over. We had people coming from Italy and South America last year. So it's always just a great time to come meet fans from around the world and to hang out in front of the firehouse, especially since the sign is now hung the correct way after many years. So, I mean, come on. Firehouse is is a great place. It's so iconic, and now that the sign is hanging the correct way, as per the movies and cartoon, it's even a more awesome sight. But also, like I said, it's a working firehouse, so if you ever go there to visit, uh, the Hook and Ladder 8 firemen, they actually sell their own merch, which helps to fund the firehouse itself. For like basic repairs or needs to the firehouse, its day-to-day functions, it helps fund the FDNY. So if you do go to the firehouse, please go there. Make sure you have cash because they're a cash only establishment right there. Uh, they sell patches, shirts, hats, pins, everything. They even have their own coin that they sell. There's a F- New York City Fire Department patch right there that Nick is holding up. Please go and support them. They're an amazing group of people. Um, I've come to know know uh, several of them over the years. And they're just, I mean, these are people who risk their lives every day. The least we could do is show a little, little love back to them. They have stickers, like I said, pins, coins, challenge coins there, hats, beanies, everything. And usually they come up with a new shirt each year for Ghostbusters Day and also for Halloween. So please go and support them. But again, I want to thank my guests. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for putting up with my craziness and insanity. And I know we are all looking forward to Ghostbusters. And I can't wait to hear Archer's take on Ghostbusters. Frozen Empire. Will it be a yay, nay? Will his wife enjoy it? She she better for the sake of the marriage, right? <laughs> we'll see. Well, well I, I know Nick's wife is going to go watch it. Oh, she's definitely going to watch it. Will she like it? She'll like it, but she's not going to like it as much as I will. She'll <laughs> like it if she knows what's good for her. Uh, right. there, is one more th- there is one more thing I do want to uh, advertise. Every year, I do Stream for the Cure. Uh, it is a fundraiser uh, that I do to help raise money for Roswell Park in the Ride for Roswell, which benefits cancer research here in Buffalo, New York. Uh, the date is actually incorrect. We're actually moving it from the 19th to May 18th. That's going to be a Saturday. I will be hosting a 10-hour or longer live stream to raise money. We are we have several, I think we're at seven or eight bundled boxes that we're going to be giving away. 
of collectible prizes. I think we are looking at a Mythic Legions box. We have a couple NECA boxes, a Ghostbusters box. We have a lot of boxes that we're going to be giving away. To enter, all you have to do is make a $10 donation to the Ride for Rosal. You can find the link in the video description below. Just make a $10 donation, take a screenshot via your phone or your computer, and then send that image to me at Dave's underscore dimension on Instagram with your screen name and your real name. And that's it. You're going to be entered in on every wheel. One $10 donation gets you in on all eight wheels. And if we add more wheels, that still, that still puts you on. If you want to donate 20 or 30, that means you get three entries on each wheel. So please consider helping out the Ride for Roswell and Roswell Comprehensive Cancer Institute. This is my, I think this is our third year uh, doing the fundraiser. Please help me help Roswell ride for a cure this year. Uh, last year I did the 44 mile ride and I'm aiming to do that one again this year, guys. So please consider helping us out. And again, all you have to do, $10 donation on, just click the link below, $10 donation there. Take a screenshot, send it to me with your screen name and real name. And you're entered in on all 10 wheels. $10 is not that much. You're lucky to get what? Uh, not even that's not that's lower than a movie ticket right now, I think. <laughs> so please consider giving to the Ride for Rosal. Uh, of course, Drain the Collector Safe Space is doing donating a few boxes as well. Uh, it's going to be a great time. It's going to be an open stream. Anybody and their grandmother can come and hang out with us, promote whatever you have your channel, your Facebook, uh, your, your only figs page. I don't know what, what whatever you want to promote. It's going to be an open stream <laughs> for everyone to come out and hang. So I just want to thank everyone for coming out. And guys, you know what I'm going to say. I say it every single time. Keep on busting, and we're going to catch you on the flip side. Take care, guys. See you later. Later. Thank <laughs> you.